Hey, everybody, you're back with Dave and Ed, and this is... Oh, wait, is that what you do? That's what you do. Oh, that's what I do. <laughs> what are you talking about? We just did this last week. I forgot. Hey, everybody, you're back with Dave and Ed, and this is To The Death Podcast. Episode 15? 15. Today we have two live fools, and they had us, so we're doing a kind of joint podcast. So it was four live fools. <laughs> yeah, so we're sitting in Garrett School, North Jersey MMA, in Lake Opacon? MMAA. MMA. What? M-M-A-A. There's two A's? Yeah. It's M-M-A-A. Oh, man. North Jersey Mixed Martial Arts Academy. Okay, okay, I got it. We're looking at the thing now. <laughs> Ed has trouble reading when the words are right in front of him. I don't have trouble laying my stomach in your face. No, you don't have trouble Tell with everybody that. about it. You're fat. I've been killing you. I don't know if killing is the word that I would use. How about my teaching? It's been good too, right? Teaching has been on point. Ed <laughs> is actually learning to be a fantastic instructor. Yanni, he might be due for another stripe. Nah, no more stripes. All right. Oh, we saw Dan Clifford today. He has six years. I don't so know. I, I, I got the name least... is familiar, but I don't remember him. You've definitely seen him before. Okay, but fine. He's had his brown belt for six years, so I got at least two more years, and then that's good. Yeah, all right. I'm in no rush to get the black. Are you in a rush? You know I'm not. Exactly. So then what are we even talking about? <laughs> All right, so tell us what we talked about today. We talked about a bunch of nonsense. A bunch we of nonsense. We talked about heel hooks in the gi, most <laughs> disgusting thing ever. Striking, slap jitsu. No, well, none of you guys agreed on slap jitsu. Everybody agreed on the heel hooks. And we talked about... Uh, Not uh, everybody agreed on the heel hooks. I said no heel no, hooks you in the gi. No, you don't matter, though. I matter. I matter <laughs> to me, and I matter to people I know. Well, this was fun for us. A nice collaboration. And I have a fan we'll base. My own fan Stop base. Stop talking over me. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I was it, just trying to wait so that uh, I could talk over just you. Just talk. Just keep talking, <laughs> please. I love Ed. This is the most fun I've had all night. <laughs> what about today? You took. You didn't come train. I, I came out to no, I, hung I out took with class. The family. I told yeah, you. We you'll went see and the rode unicycle, tomorrow. skateboard. What are you doing tomorrow? I'm training. What are you doing tomorrow? I'm training. I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm going to see Gary. I'm going to text him to find out if this is real. Take a picture and post it. Fine. That's a good idea. Post it on. We should probably, we're still at Garrett's right now doing the uh, We intros, should outros. take a picture. We got to take a picture. Oh my God. I cannot believe we never take pictures. We took the one for the last time. We'll keep it going. It wasn't even us. That was because of Dominica. I know. Thank God you did that. <laughs> we definitely have to get better at this whole social media thing. We? Uh, I remember talking specifically on Gary's podcast that that is your job. Okay. Take the picture. I'll post it. Okay. Don't say we though. Say I. Oh, you take the picture. I'll post it. I can't take the picture. We all got to be in the picture together. People want to see me. Nobody wants to see you. You're going to be behind everyone. Otherwise, nobody's going to see anyone else. All right. That's weak, weak, weak. That, what, I don't care if it's weak. It's true. What's with all the noise, dude? <laughs> this is a professional recording studio Yeah, we're just here. talking. We got to take a picture, bro. We always forget about the pictures. He just you don't have to be quiet. Up. It's okay. Make noise. <laughs> it's fun. What kind of noise was that? <laughs> Hashtag me too. What, what else you got? Anything else? We're going to go into the episode and then we'll do the outro? I'm not ready to get into the episode right, Tell yet. me You're more. always in a rush. What else did we talk about? I'm excited for the revivation. Is that a word? Revivation. For the revivation. For sure not. Nope. For the rebirth go ahead. of Mean Jitsu. Oh, yeah. We're talking about Mean Jitsu shirts. We got to get on that. Yeah. You got to you gotta make a specific with your logo and everything. There we go. He's got it. All right. Well, maybe we can get one. I'll maybe rep, we can get one? I'll rep Mean Jitsu. There we go. Hang on a second. Could we be potentially talking sponsorship here? <laughs> He's trying to bully his way into a sponsorship. <laughs> what do you mean bully? We're pumping him up right now. Well, that's what we're doing together. We're trying to get together with the podcast. We're starting to train together. Well, not you because you got to spend time with your family. But Oh, sorry. I like my family, Ed. If you liked your family, you I would spend time with I love my them. family. Don't put that on really? me. Really? How much time you spend with them this week? This week was a rough week because I'm still on days. I got another month of that. Then I'll be back on my two days a week like I should be. Oh, man. It's rough working five days a week like a normal person, isn't it, Ed? It's rough. <laughs> it oh definitely is rough. I can't take it anymore. So how many more weeks? Probably four more weeks. Four more weeks of five days a week. Are you even doing 40 hours, though? Yeah, I do 40 hours. Oh, you're doing 40 I'm actually, hours. I'm actually doing a little more than 40 because I'm only supposed to work four. I worked five this week, 10-hour days, so 50 hours. 10-hour days? There you go. Wow, this is very different from what you're normally used to. And I'm still killing on the podcast. I and know, I'm killing think, you in the jiu-jitsu room, too. I think that the podcast is suffering a little bit because we haven't been getting as many clips as we talked you about. you got to be kidding me. 
you said Monday, Wednesday, Friday, clips. That's when I was working two days a week. Now the clips are going to take a little bit of a break, and then we'll exactly. be back to it. So why is it okay for you to slack? You know why? Because but if the world doesn't want to continue with the podcast, or we can't get a guest, then you're screaming at me that, why don't we have a guest? You need to line up a guest. Listen, Ed, this is what happens sometimes. People get busy, just like your clips that you're slacking No, no, on. no. But the episodes are what matters. The clips are just supplementary. Okay. Well, the guests are just no, supplementary. No, they are not. Yes, they are too. All right, stop this. We'll talk more in the outro, please. All right, fine. All right, I hope you guys enjoy. This is To The Death Podcast. Episode 15. All right, here we go. We're going. So I just heard some really disgusting news. Garrett, I'm really disappointed in you. I don't care where you come from. I don't care your lineage. I don't care that you were one of my original training partners. What you did tonight was a disgrace to jujitsu. Explain yourself. What? A heel hook in the gi? That's gross. <laughs> exactly. Gross. Hey, listen, what are you going to do? You get in a street fight and be like, oh, I'm wearing jeans. This is illegal. You know, you teach it in no gi, don't thing. you? No, but this is the thing. I approach jujitsu in a different way. So I know you're approaching it from a point wise so but I've always approached jujitsu from self defense. So he doesn't so, care about self defense. Yeah. I, well, no. Yeah. Everybody knows the heel hooks from taking no gi class, but you don't do it in the gi for the people that have competition in mind. Says who? Some stupid rules? Yes. We Thank already you. talked about this. Some stupid rules. <laughs> exactly. Words on paper. I'm okay. Yeah, with words this. on paper. Do you know how well, to read, Ed? That's what you do with words on paper. Drew, how do you feel about this? All right, so... He's going to agree with you because he's a yes man. We've talked about this already. Yes man well, Drew. Well, Drew, <laughs> opinionate, please. When it was like three it was like three months ago, we started when we first started training again after we were shooting the Zoom classes, we decided to do a gi session. And we were going, and probably like a minute in, like he heel hooked me. And there was Disgusting. that moment where I was like, why? Why would you do that? And then I figured, like, it's Garrett. Pr prison rules. Listen, always. I'm a grown, a grown man. You can say ass. Oh, okay. I'm a grown <laughs> ass man. Yeah, I don't do agree. I'm a grown but, arse man. So. Yeah, no, but I, I've always just trained, like, you know, and, and, and you know, Dave knows this. I've, I've trained legs since I was a blue belt. That. So I've been straight ankle locking, knee barring since I was, like, a three-stripe white belt to blue belt. Everybody nice. used to be like, oh, it's cheap, and now everybody thinks it's the coolest thing in the world. That's not so, what I remember of training with you. What I remember of training with you is you were always – you were a three stripe, I think, when I started, and I it was so, right? neon belly, spinning arm lock. I neon still belly, do that. Spinning you do. Arm lock. I still you do. do that. Gotten and that fine, on a I remember times. when I first shut it down. I was like, "Thank God," because <laughs> I was I didn't understand even what was happening in the beginning. Hey, so, I was perfecting my craft. That's all I was trying to do. That's it. I still stick with the same stuff anyway. I was Listen, doing deep half guard. I saw today. him playing half guard with you tonight. Yeah, well, he, <laughs> gotta protect he myself. Looked, Surprise! He literally looked at me. and He's like, "I'm just stalling. I'm just stalling." <laughs> oh yeah, he closed he goes, his he guard. Goes, I'm star. He goes, "I just closed my guard. I've never closed my guard on anybody." In Yo, my your boy George <laughs> is making me work hard. Doesn't he understand the rules? Give the energy that I'm given. He's hey, just gotta win. Uh, he, just like you gotta win. Hey, listen, that's just uh, hey, we 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 like to do what we do, but George George is like the Energizer Bunny, bro. Yeah, like, he's got a cast. Tank for his days, gas so. tank, and then the biggest thing too is he his muscle fatigue. Like his gas and his muscle endurance stay together. So even like 10, 15 minutes into a roll, he's just as strong as when he started. So I mean, it's a it's a blessing for him. So like when we train, I'm always like, I know he can go. So I'm like, you go, you go, because especially with like higher belts, if you settled on him, he's stuck. So, but if he kept moving, you couldn't control the position. So then when he was doing that, it made you have to work. And like you said, he I could- I almost threw up on you. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How old is he? How old is he? George is 27. There you go. That explains oh, it. Oh, don't guess that. I hurt Maybe. myself tonight skateboarding with my son. Nice. Nah, I didn't even listen, fall. He writes unicycles with his son, skateboarding. He's going to turn his son into a clown. He's going Yo, to clown school. you can school. do unicycles? I cannot do a unicycle. Oh, no, like, no. Yo, he my... got one for his birthday. Oh, and did he's he? been trying well, to do well, it. My best friend's father used to literally drive around on a unicycle playing an accordion every time and drinking accordion. shots You're off of it. You're talking about accordion. juggling. I could get him an accordion. Get him an accordion. accordion. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> See? No, but he, he wanted the skateboard tonight. So I got on the skateboard and I had to show him an ollie and like just moving on the skateboard. I had to move too fast and I pulled something in my neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's rough getting old. I don't skateboard. You got to get the longboards, man. Especially when you get older, a lot more stable. Like you screws. He wanted to do tricks. Can you do tricks on a longboard? I think so. You probably could. You need like hills and stuff, right? Yeah. Like, can we stop what, talking we, about, dude, can we we stop talking about skateboarding, yeah. please? We live in the mountains. This is a BJJ podcast. Even we were <laughs> in a parking lot because yeah, I have a dirt driveway. Yeah, but it has to do with balance and technique. I'm going to mute both of you guys. 
guys. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree with Garrett. See, it's something in yeah, something in the water over here. Listen, I want to get into this. I want right. to get to know Drew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when we start, you're allowed to opinionate. We'll yeah, yeah. protect you. Listen, <laughs> no, we're, yeah, we're putting you on the spot right Two here. Two against so. one, so okay. That's all right. So when we, st- I'm ready to scrap. We all started around similar times. Like mm-hmm. he, he was about a year ahead of me and mm-hmm. Dave as well, and then we're all at George's and. You know, now it's starting to spread out. And then I want to just know when you got to George's, when you really started. So I first started training at Evolutionary Martial Arts in Hackistown. So I trained there for a couple of years, primarily just doing Who's Muay over Thai. there? Dave Fiera. Yeah, Dave I don't know who that is. You know who that is? Yes, I know who that is. It kills me. <laughs> now, <laughs> did anybody. you come here because of who was the fighter that you used to work with? Out of Dave's? Yeah. Well, I had Chad. Nope, he had a shaved head. Shaved head. I mean, you guys oh, are killing him. You guys are killing Pete. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Jeff? Orton? No. Nope. Can you tell me the point Carl. is? You know the guy. Just no. Carl. Carl. The English guy. Red no. hair. No. He like runs like so one then of the that's biggest not events the re- in UK. The point is he's <laughs> okay. not the reason that Drew is here because okay. you don't Drew, even know who I'm talking here? about. <laughs> what happened? Just let so, him talk. Yeah. That's so I know fault. Chad. So I'm actually good friends with Chad. So Chad was fighting MMA and I used to always hear of Garrett. Like if guys were fighting like MMA primarily, they would go to Garrett to train like two or three times a week. So then years later, I actually moved out to New York for a couple of years, and I was training um, at Henzo's over there. Then when I came back to Jersey, when I met my wife, I started, that's when I started training with, um, at George's in Denville. And then on a random Friday open mat, that's when I actually, I think it was probably like three, four years ago, I like finally actually met like Garrett. And I was kind of oh, like, oh, It's only yeah. been three or four years. Fantastic. Yeah, probably. Probably, yeah. Maybe a little bit longer. We knew each other. We just really started training together pro- probably about three or four years ago. Yeah. 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 So maybe a little longer, maybe five. It could be. Yeah. Could be five. I've been to Georgia's probably like four years. Four. Yeah. So four yeah. about four years. When yeah. did George switch over to the after the flood? When was that? Uh, oh, that was that was Irene. But he didn't leave. No, he didn't. What do you mean? He switched you said out. Switch over. No, he, he switched stayed over there. to other school. The other no, location. he stayed there. He stayed. No, he, he did. He rebuilt that yeah. location for what about I think three years. It was a few years. And yeah. And then he bought the building over on okay. uh, Broadway. That is right. The yep, main yeah. part of Denver. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I just went over there for the first time the other day. Nice Fantastic. little. Fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice little facility. He's got facility. a lot of space up there. If there's ever a flood again, it's yeah, good that's to what, go. Yeah, that's what <laughs> he said, too. Yeah, Half he's got everything up there. Floor, okay. <laughs> first floor destroyed, we can still be on oh, the yeah. second floor. Plus, you know? nice, you got Thatcher's right across the street, so you can just run right out and grab a beer after training. So Yeah. Yeah, no, it's pretty nice. That. I almost got beer and just brought it here to throw everybody off. Uh, we're when on top I just of a liquor out. store. I know. That's yeah, what I was going to do. I was going to uh, get it, bring it here, and throw all you guys off. You don't fish drink, it out. No, I it's wasn't like going to drink. It was for you guys. I was going to see if I could make all of you sound foolish. So, yeah, so Drew was, what, f- about four four years ago, we started training training together. And then, um, yeah, and then primarily now Drew trains with me a couple times a week, still trains yeah. at George's a couple times a and week. And then you started cornering me at a couple tournaments. So it was yep. like more like grappling industries and a couple super fights. So your guys were usually, we were always on like the same card. Yep. So you he would point- just pop up and do training camps with us. And yeah. then I started coaching them. And that's all she wrote. Now, that's Drew, it. how old are you? 34. 34. And look at you. You look like you're in great shape. Jack, what do you think bro. about somebody like Ed, <laughs> a disgrace, <laughs> younger than you, falling apart? How old are you? 31. You fat bastard. <laughs> he really is a disgrace that, right? to the belt, isn't he? Yes, he can. <laughs> hey, well, the belt holds it up. Listen, I just rolled with Dan Clifford, and he had six years at Brown Belt, so he made me feel a lot but better. But he's got kids. He's like I got 30. kids too, bro. <laughs> That's the struggle, yeah, he man. Probably, what, he probably works like, five days a, a week. Did you get it first? Did I get it first? <laughs> They're like, both of us need to get this black. I'm like, I told Clifford, I'm like, just trade twice a week, dude. I just want to, I, I want you to be one, but it's just with his schedule, he switched jobs, bought the house, lives a dude, little I further. Dude, I love seeing so. him. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's, he's been cool. with me since day one. Yeah, so he used to come. To, he came to Yanni's around 2008. He, yep. I, I think sent he was him going there when he was going to William Patterson. When he was going to William Patterson, so there was uh, we were a white belt room. That's it. It was yeah. four like ten white belts, and Yanni was a brown belt. Mm-hmm. And Dan Clifford used to come in as a blue belt and just dominate. He was one of the guys that started giving me my toughness. He's got that. He's got that farm boy strength, and he has zero quit in him. He's stubborn, stubborn as a mule. Like you try to submit him, he's just stubborn. He doesn't like to tap it, and he just he goes, he goes. He's been a great training partner, a great asset to my academy. It's always it's always good rounds, whether it's gear or no gear. I noticed that he's just he's game. He's a game dude. So now let me ask you guys: Did you both train with Ed tonight? I did. Did you tap him? No, I did not. But he was stalling on me the whole time. That's what he does. <laughs> he though. was just stalling. That's on what me. he does. He gets to half guard. I, I, I almost passed, and then you. the bell rang. Like I got on his back, and he looks at me. He goes, "Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha." I the always know the he clock. knows hey, the listen, clock. But that's yeah. it, the, the other thing is, it's like there's an art to that too. It's a boring art, but there is an art to that too. You, mm-hmm. you know. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear that. Could you say it one more whoa, time, please? Whoa, that's survival, baby. No, just say it again. Yeah, no, it's a. It, 
in competition, it's no, a no, just boring say exactly art. that. Perfect. Yes. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, idiot. <laughs> Got him. Did you guys know what that was? Yes. All yes. right, good. Yeah, all right, well, hold on. Let's get back. So we're talking about the heel hooks. We have been talking to all the guests that we had about the point system we want to develop. And yeah. one of the ones that really got me was McLaughlin okay. was talking about giving points from control and turtle position. Controlling because turtle position. Because in a real fight, if you have somebody hooked like this, you could – Hit him I agree and knee him to the side like GSP knee uh, Matt Sarah. Like 100%. I think that should for sure be so put for into like play. time or how 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 long? Three hold seconds, the just like everything. Okay. You, you control yeah, just points control the hips. So just like you, have to, you, uh, you have to hug the hips or you have to have like over under like a seatbelt no, no, grip or no seatbelt. Just like you're just riding here. them. You just got riding. a good meat hook on them and you're riding. Yeah, like them. he's turtling, defending. That's what his point is. Well, this is what I'm getting back to too because you were saying points, points, no heel hooking in the gi. And I know Brian fought you know MMA and I've trained with Brian you know back at. Henzo's once Listen, or twice. I didn't agree with him either, okay? It's okay. We didn't ask you. You could be wrong. Right yeah, you could be wrong. So, it's all right. But it's all right. But I think he approaches it as self defense as well because I think he's originally from a Hoist Gracie. I think he's a Hoist Gracie, right? A Rob Khan? Yeah. Okay. So, and yeah. Rob Khan's under Hoist Gracie, right? So, I think, you know, you the traditional Gracie systems are all about self defense. And then it was proven in MMA. And then the points came kind of after, you know, from my understanding and just seeing the well, evolution. Well, they used to do like no time limits. But that right? was why Mao and back were the most points because in a fight, you, that's where you do the most damage. Mm -hmm. He talks about what would be the most devastating in reality. So, turtle position, if you're the top guy in turtle, if you can hold him, you yeah, can beat or the front snot headlock, out of somebody. Front headlock. Dropping knees on somebody's yeah, head right yeah. there. So. I agree. No, yeah, I, agree with, I agree with Brian a, on that. All right, Something we're starting a petition, so we got to get our 100,000 signatures, send it up to Trump. He can yeah. sign for us. <laughs> That's so perfect. is it just that? Is it just the uh, the attack and turtle position, or are you guys thinking about any other? No, well, he's he a heel hooker in the gi. Okay. You know, um, he's a heel crucifix. hooker in the gi, too? Oh, crucifix. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about crucifix. 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 He thinks he points. side mount crucifix oh, is mount the crucifix. most lethal like, uh, position. Because you could drop elbows. Matt Hughes on BJ Penn. Whatever. Yeah, no, I mean... I think if it's not even if it's if does he want to point it or make it an advantage? No points. No, I think he's just talking about reality. No, well, in reality, that's the most devastating position. Okay, so top cruise of top side crucifix. Obviously, if you have both your legs that are some of the strongest, you know, limbs on your body controlling one arm, one arm, it's over. It's it, that's a tough day. I just think if they add more and more points, it's just going to make people have more and more options to try to come back to and, advance, yeah, and to do stuff. So and that's, make guys move. Like if you have yeah, so many turtle and they know that they're you're more. about to score, they're going to start they're freaking move, out. Yeah, and where then guys open can't up. play that safety game. So you're messed. So you All right. So <laughs> all right. So uh, what was the other ones? Oh yeah. So stand up mm -hmm. is a big problem for me when I watch. IBJJF stuff, people circling, backing out of bounds on purpose. Leandro mm -hmm. Lowe is king at this. You know, I love Leandro Lowe, but, but he, he, he loves he playing the, the system, edge. though. Yeah. So, like, I was just watching Jordan Burroughs Yeah, but and you wrestling. watch any of these high-level guys, they all play the edge. I know, but... And they play the, and, and they play I, the points. I like, want to get um, around that. That you're one buddy, Jimenez. I watched yeah, him with is. Surge. He'll attack positions, and he doesn't even have it. But like, even when they go out of bounds, he'll stay on it because he knows they'll restart him in that dominant position. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's yeah. just yeah. playing. That's Smart. knowing the rules. But he's not playing the edge. He's not trying to no, sprawl no, 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 out of no, bounds. No, no, no. That's I'm, the I'm thing just saying, that, like, when once you're locked in the position, like you say, right, like yes. you are, he'll you, hold those uh, body locks yes, and exactly. come back to center with the body lock. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, but yes, I hate exactly. the guys that are playing the edge, planning on, all right, this guy's going to sprawl, and I'm just, or this guy's going to shoot, I'm going to sprawl out of bounds, get reset in the middle because I can't do. Well, a you take just down. told me that all you do is pull guards. So what do you care? Oh, he yeah, does pull guard. But I'm, I'm talking about watching. Hurts my soul as a spectator. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see double guard pulls. I want to see some some judo. Like, we want to yeah. see some judo. I we got to tell e we tell the rules. Well, that's why rules. when you watch the Masters Worlds, it's like, oh, there's jujitsu again because they're wrestling, they're doing judo. Listen, when I go to Masters stuff. Worlds, I'm pulling guard. I know you will. Yeah. You're okay. gonna get hurt training. You're not even gonna make it there. There's no <laughs> Masters Worlds this year. I have a whole year and change to prep for it now. All right, Drew, come on, mm -hmm. jump in here. Tell me about some point system you got. You got any rules that you have always wanted? Something new. You know, honestly, he wants Garrett to stop heel, stop heel hooking him. No, he, <laughs> he wants to heel hook. It's so hard because you know I've you know I've competed in both kind of formats with points, and I've also done like sub only shows, and it's I don't know. I'm, I'm at, the, at the end of the day, I'm almost kind of leaning more to, towards those like sub only. Let shows. me just give you an example of why sub only sucks. For mm -hmm. some, wait a second. Hold on. So you see what I did to you? The stall, stall, stall. Mm -hmm. I played some sub tournaments where I stall, stall, stall. Maybe I'm getting dominant the whole time. Then we do an overtime round of points. I do a half guard sweep. You lose. Yes. Yeah. Hang on a second now. I'm gonna bring up a but good point here. Isn't that why Eddie Bravo went into the overtime rules? Yeah. yeah but he, yeah. There, he changes he said, it though. Every but tournament, there are every guys EBI that hit. stall to get to the EBI overtimes. Yeah. So for let's throw all That's that why he in did the garbage. Shootout that they just How about? Did, right? And that was boring too. I didn't watch that. How about 
you already had somebody that competed in Kasai. What do you think about Kasai rule sets? Right now, that's my favorite. Kasai rule sets are pretty cool. Um, I think them and ADCC rules are... I don't like ADCC. Uh, it, it makes you wrestle, though. It does. That's but the, you don't that's... even get points for the takedown. The guy goes to his knees. You got nothing. Now we're back to, here's a guy in turtle. I should get something for that. Yes. So I think it's got to be a collab of like ADCC rules. Kasai rules were good too. Um, I think those are some of my favorite moves because Kasai takes like some of the IBJJF rules and merges them with the ADCC yeah. rules. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but a lot of these shows too, it's like almost like when you used to do kickboxing back in the day. Yeah. You could fight Muay Thai rules, leg kick only rules, so you can box leg kick or American rules. So I think that, you know... It, it, each person has that skill set and they can compete in certain things and they're going to thrive in certain skill sets. But I think there needs to be like something across the board, like just make it a level playing. Field. I just you got to incentivize it to make it worth watching because there's sometimes when I'm watching worlds or I'm real excited and there's sometimes I'm falling asleep. Yes. And it, how are you going to grow the sport like that? Yeah, and I'm, That's yeah, the yeah. biggest yeah. thing. I love it. I'm, the, I'm their target audience, too. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to get casual people into gi jiu-jitsu? It's tough right now. Yeah, well, even like wrestling, too. Like if, if a lot of people will – there was that big petition a couple years ago to take it out of the Olympics because if you don't know the sport at all, it could actually be like very boring, a lot of people. So I don't know. The if heavy you have, weights. The heavyweights. Yeah. Well, okay. But now you yeah, got yeah. those heavyweights that are like, they move like cats, you know, yeah. where like yeah. old school. I mean, Greco's like even more boring, I guess you would say. No, until you, the guy goes flying through the yes, air. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it's kind of like judo, too. Judo's boring until you see one guy go, oh, and then he posts a doggy bag, you know? Like, so it's, it's, it's one of those things, unless you understand the art and you understand the grip fighting, the positioning, you're like, oh, did you see how he got out of that or something like that? It could, grappling could be a boring art. And that's why, like, even in MMA, you ever Everybody wants to see the knockout. Yeah. You know? Not me. I want to see the submission. But we understand and appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a big difference. The average casual fit. Now, I would say more of the fans are becoming more educated. So they do appreciate the submissions and the transitions a lot more. But that's also been what? How long has the UFC been around for now? 20-something years yeah. now. Well, you think about it, too, when you look at like, uh, like ADCC. When you actually look into the crowd, how many of those people do you actually think train jujitsu? Probably like ninety-seven percent, ninety-eight percent. Oh yeah, you're not going to ADCC if yeah. you don't train. So that that was the thing. I, I remember seeing like an interview with like uh, I think it was like John Danaher, and he's kind of explaining that when you actually look into the crowd, this is the sport. Most of the people that watch it actually train it, and you could see when you're watching some of these slow matches, when you see those little advantages, those little sweeps, those little off bounces, you hear the crowd kind of you know kind of react to it. That's yeah, but cool. can you pick out? A slow match from this past ADCC. I think every match was exciting, oh, especially no, yeah. with some of the lunatics that are coming up today, like Nicky Rod. I mean, Orlando Sanchez yeah. won ADCC by causing a negative point. That's how yeah. he won. He would have done the same thing if it wasn't for Nicky Rod out there just bashing. Dude, just Orlando what, Sanchez. What's it, he's clubbing him. <laughs> moves, bro. He doesn't, he doesn't I move. I love him, like, though. Like, he's just like, he's like, that's that guy's my spirit animal. Dude, he is. I, yeah. I agree with you on his, that, his man. Match, like, his match with Tom DeBloss, the last ADCC, I remember he was moving like a 150-pounder. It was crazy when he was on top of him. He was just like leg pummeling, like hopping over his back, like spinning on top of him. And I'm like... A guy that big shouldn't move like that. Yeah. What do you guys think about the slap fighting? Slap jujitsu. Oh, combat jujitsu. Combat jujitsu. Jiu yeah. uh, oh, no, yeah. you guys don't like this? Uh, Thank you. You might as well do Thank MMA you. if you're really going to. That's my. If I think. All right. So I'm going to be. Uh, Here we go. Let's hear it. I don't know. I guess. What, what is it called? Uh, diplomatic. Oh, diplomatic. Diplomatic. Go ahead. Let's see. All it. right. So I think it's a very good, safe transition for jujitsu guys that don't know how to punch or kick to start making the transition into MMA. How about you if learn they want punching to do that. or kicking? If you're going to go into MMA. I agree. But every, like, listen, Rome wasn't built in a day. I, I think that you need to spend more time striking and less time doing jujitsu if you're already competent in jujitsu. I agree. But. Not everybody, if you're competent in jiu-jitsu and you don't understand the ground strike, because, listen, this is the biggest thing I've seen. I've seen guys that are brown belts that just train jiu-jitsu, even black belts. Their first day of MMA, you start punching them and elbowing them in the face, their jiu-jitsu goes out the window. Yeah. I've, I've literally seen world champions fall apart on the mat once you start punching them in the face. So until you really get in that grind, and you still have to be able to do that in front of an audience, so it's like that kind of intermediate level where like you're – you're, you're, the big stage is on you. Everybody's watching you. You're dealing with the nerves and anxiety do, and now you're learning how to take a shot in front of people and not get rocked right, around me, as much. All right, let me extend on this. So, oh, my goodness. Hold Go ahead, on. Dave. Come on. So interrupt I want to say what Brian McLaughlin was saying. He thinks that it should be trained from white belt 
on with the proper supervision, you start to show these guys. I agree. So now, because you don't really want white belts starting MMA, yeah. they got to no. ease into it. No, we even do some like uh, classes here every once in a while where like I'll have one guy put on the gloves and just have a guy punch from guard, so you know your basic sweeps under fire, you know your basic arm lock attacks under fire, because like jujitsu is useless unless you can get your opponent to ground. So that's why we do a lot of wrestling here. We do a lot of judo because. Why are you looking at me? I know I, how to do it. I, I just don't like to do it. But if you don't do it, then you're not proficient. There's whoa, a lot. Whoa, whoa, I don't. Nah, I don't we're like, like Ryan Hall that. though. We'll just start rolling until we get a leg or something. <laughs> I don't whoa, do that either. Well, you put yourself on Ryan Hall level pretty yeah. quick. At, listen, I know. Yeah. Listen, he's round. I got he's gonna roll. Number. It'll be easy for him yeah, to roll around it's in like this bowling. shape. Just take out our legs. <laughs> right. hopefully, hopefully, nothing in your back gives out like halfway through. Yeah. So I mean, I think I just think it depends. Everybody's doing jujitsu now for a different reason. If your goal is competition, then train competition jujitsu. If your goal is self defense, train self defense jujitsu. If your goal is both, like that's the thing. I teach. I personally think I teach a style of jujitsu that converts to all. Where I've had guys win in points, I've had guys win in MMA, I've had guys win in you know. Um, you know, sub only matches. So whatever jujitsu we're teaching here can kind of, I try to encompass one. So we're not super heavy. We can be competitive in any arena that we walk into. Listen, I like what you're doing here, except for the heel hooks. <laughs> All right. That's the only thing that's got to go. Come back to that. Listen, Drew's, Drew's a leg assassin. So don't you act like you don't heel hook people at the gate. <laughs> Purely accident, I swear. Yeah, it's not an accident <laughs> at all. So, I mean, Drew, like, he's pretty much been my, one of him and uh, Sergio have been my main leg training partners. And they're both, you know, Serge is 6'3", Drew is probably six foot. I'm the littlest guy here, so, and they're bigger and stronger. But we've been really working the leg pumbles in that type of game for, you know, a couple of years now. And, uh, I mean, those guys are just as fi efficient, if not more efficient than me on the legs. Well, so. I want to talk about this from the pop podcast perspective. So we both started podcasts. Mm -hmm. I mean, our goal is to just kind of spread it even wider. I don't think we've hit the ceiling with the people that are going to train. Okay. And this is one of the avenues where we can kind of bring people in, let them yeah. know, you know, this is what we're going to do after, you know, any training session. I just trained a class. We're going to sit around and talk, the camaraderie, you know, bring more people in because competition right now is not the way that you're going to bring in a casual fan you got to get them on the mats yeah. especially we were talking about with Dominica getting them while they're young so it's not as intimidating especially for women you know it's harder for a woman maybe in her 20s to just walk yeah, in walk a room in. full yeah, of men yeah. mostly and 100 then <laughs> get sweat in their but, face but and all that you are seeing and i'm sure dave as a school owner too like you're seeing girls training jujitsu at a younger age now right mm -hmm. I have. I would say it's like 50-50 almost the now, The kids right? is almost 60% girls. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. Which is awesome because, like, that's, like, you know, that's that's the switch we're starting to see, and the girls are tougher <laughs> when they're younger. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. They're way yeah. tougher because yeah. they're more coordinated than the boys. Boys are, like, you know. They, no, they listen, too. And they even, listen. Even women. Last night we're showing a class, and the – the girl, only girl in class is the one that's understanding it the most. Yeah. So now they have a deficit, usually physically, but they pay attention. And then she they was start cheating, to though. She wasn't cheating. She was doing all right. How was she cheating? I don't even know what she's talking about. She's more just flexible or something. Was she I don't know. You're hooking in the gate? <laughs> was was well, we're playing old school. Out. Deep half guard. <laughs> Ed taught last night. Go figure. Yeah. So <laughs> Drew's got a fancy half guard on him. That's nah, all right. Let me hear about You're it. You're starting to figure it out. Deep half yeah. guard? Yeah, I like to play. Yeah. So I was describing this to the so all the students we had yesterday, are mostly white belts. They don't. When I say deep half guard, they just think you know regular half guard. Yeah. And I kind of explain it to them like it's a secret hallway. It's somewhere you're not going to end up by accident. Yeah. Yes. You got to be looking for it, or yeah. the person on bottom's got to be looking for it, for it mm -hmm. or else you're never going to find it. So it's good to train from there live. And they were doing all last night, and they're starting to get it, and uh, it makes me very happy. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, doing it for a couple, you know, when I was. I was doing a lot more of it in Noki, and I was doing it primarily just to enter the legs, essentially. But now as I've been training more gi, I've been noticing a lot more sweeps. I found, like, a bunch of back takes off of it and everything. So I, I, it's such I a mean, versatile we've been move. Yanni's been coming to teach seminars with Garrett since. Well, Yanni was my first instructor. But that's what George. he was showing. Like, yeah. so I've been training with Yanni. Yeah. Like, like, I know you were at school primary, but I've been training with Yanni probably longer than anybody around here. And, you know, Yanni, that was his thing. Um, and, I mean, he's one of the best hidden gems of jiu-jitsu yeah. in the world. He's also got a beast he's open guard, too. Yeah, he's like, open guard. So. Now he's got Listen, everything. He yeah, I mean, yeah. especially yeah. Yeah. No has everything. I've trained with him at Georgia. I haven't trained with him since, you know, the COVID hit or whatever, but we were training literally every Wednesday together, no gi, and going back and forth, back and forth. But he's just... 
this is the thing about Yanni. No matter what you do, and I know George used to say this all the time. You're like, he'd be like, you could light his grand, his mother's underwear on fire in front of him, and his demeanor and his attitude and his spe speed will not change. You can't ruffle his feathers. So like, even though you'll attack him, like he's one speed, and he either draws you into that, or you could try to run around him. You could try to rough him up, and he just stays even keel. He's a smooth operator, that one. <laughs> yeah, but he's weak as hell though. He can't. <laughs> Once I get the squeeze on him, he's not you get moving. Get the mush on this him. Is, yeah. uh, can we? I gotta say something negative. Make sure <laughs> that we leave that in. I want him to hear that. Yeah. We are at 24 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, Dave always complains like, "Oh, Ed, you never get tapped. Never get tapped. Every roll I roll with Yanni, I get tapped." Yeah, yeah but that's. Yanni's different. He's got to be the best guy in the area because he's always evolving. He's all right. <laughs> he's very good. No, he's good. He's very good. We go to war, me and him. He's very good. But he's, he's on top. Oh, no, yeah. No, but he think gets about the, it. Yeah. Look how unassuming he is. Right? You seem like you're in better shape. You're on the roids now. <laughs> roids? This is called dad strength. I had three kids. Throwing I got three stronger, kids around. I got stronger, yeah. and I got he doesn't stronger. have three kids to throw around, all right? Yeah. He is the most unassuming guy, and he's no, he is. always there. He's a sleeper. There. Yeah. He's a sleeper. But he, he, his jujitsu IQ is off the charts. Yeah. You know, because he is a, he's a smart guy to begin with, and he applies that to jujitsu, and his jujitsu IQ is like I call it, he's like an encyclopedia of jujitsu. Like we just did an interview with uh, Savello, Chris. He's the same way. Like he he might not have the um, you know the leg knowledge, but he is an encyclopedia of jujitsu because he's trained with some of the best guys in the area too, and he's a Marcel black belt. So he's gotten to see you know the Henzo style of stuff. He's gotten to see the Marcel style of stuff. So he has a good uh, you know combination of both. All right, so I've been listening to your guys' podcast, and one of the things that kind of grinds my gears a little bit mm -hmm. is you guys don't really disagree a lot. So Ever. I want, yeah, I want to bring out a, a real disagreement. So give me okay. something yeah. you guys really disagree on. I want to see a little debate here. I want to see if we can jump on either side. All right, let's see. Um, what, what, do, what do we disagree on? It's not much. Yeah, that's yeah. I know. That's why we get along. <laughs> yeah, that's it the really thing. Is. It's no, like when that, this all you hit, should get along, man. When this when this kind of everything hit and like we were like, you know, filming the Zoom classes, like it was just we noticed more and more the more like the more and more we spoke, the more and more we had a, a very similar pro uh, thought process. One thing that I don't know if we disagreed on, mm -hmm. but I had to bring him to my side a little bit is like I don't know if you heard the James Curry episode with all the crazy stuff going on and you know I've always been like I'm not a mainstream guy like mm -hmm. media and all that I kind of do the other thing so he thought I was a crazy like alien big fun hunter basically <laughs> and now little by little he's like you ain't so crazy anymore and I'm like I told yeah. you so when Wait, you, so you're on the Bigfoot train now so when because <laughs> every time I've trained here on like a Saturday and like him and I would have like conversations this is before everything was like kind of getting closed down like he'd always bring up some some type of point and at first i'm just like i'm really kind of like go with the flow so i'm just kind of like yeah whatever man like you know you're, you're crazy Crackhead. and then as yeah, we kinda, yeah exactly. as we're like spending more time he's like you know he's giving me information so i'm like all right well obviously i have a lot of time in my hands so let me like do some research and like jump on the you know jump on google for a couple hours and as he's like like explaining things to me he's like sending me links i'm like this is actually starting to make a lot of sense so there's like little things he's he's kind of yeah <laughs> that's so, right that's yes, right. man. Yep. Yeah. No, not yes, man. Di hold on. Listen, hold on. Let's flip this. Yes, man. Again. So real quick. Hold on. We're going to flip this real quick. Why the... Okay, let me watch my mouth. Here we go. Here we why go. are you why two the French toast? so confrontational, and why do you pick on him so much? You're mean. Somebody has to pick on him. Why? He's jealous. Because you're being a bully? Yes, so I'm a bully. So you teach bully in your school? 100%. Oh, Jesus. Uh, See, I message. can be a bully, but I don't bully. That's okay. Be a bully. I don't mind. Do you, do you I enjoy encourage that all of you? my students to pick on Ed. This is how. No, no, this is now, how. Now, Ed, tell him, what do you react to better? Positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement? Throughout my life, I've only reacted to negative reinforcement. So when people I'm start trying talking to down to make to me, him better. So yeah, if yeah. we all bully him and make him feel horrible about himself, he might improve. Is that how you work? Yeah, I don't like uh, positive. If you start talking good, like you were talking about Yanni, you start talking about me, I'm going to punch you in punch the face. Yeah, <laughs> See? That's so right. really, I'm not being I've a bully. i you punch. I'm not terribly worried about it. So. <laughs> but really, I'm not being a bully. I'm trying to prop him up. And Listen, I'm doing you know it my teaching backwards. Style. I'm, I'm very raw. So, but I, I can agree with you that some people do not respond well to positive reinforcement. Ed That's why I don't give people. it often. And when I do, people are like, whoa, you said I did good. And I'm like, yeah, don't, don't think but you're ever going to hear it again. Listen, though, because but I'm starting to realize the more, credit credit's due. the more I'm around Ed, he doesn't respond to negative reinforcement either. I was going to say, it doesn't seem <laughs> he like just, it's working. He he's doesn't coming right back at you. He doesn't respond, period. Yeah. That's it. It's either he's going to do it 
or he's not. So the jujitsu thing, he's kind of not doing. The podcast thing, that's what he's into right now. So he'll go home after this, and he's going to sit and edit this podcast for seven hours, and he'll miss jujitsu tomorrow. No. I'm going to train no. with Gary tomorrow. He asked we'll me. We'll see. I'm going. I already got we'll my alarm see. set. 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to wake up, head over there. So this podcast isn't going to be done by 8 o'clock in the morning? Nah. He goes, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Got to respect the honesty. That's, just like, nah. that's a hard note, Ghost Rider. Nope. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, we enjoy it. That's the big thing I think we noticed, too, is like we really enjoy doing the podcast because I think for us, like our goal, we were kind of talking about it last night, if you want to kind of go into that. Yeah, it's... A, <sighs> You know, obviously, when everything started, like we had so much like free time in our hands, and he kind of brought it up. He's like, you know, I've always thought about kind of you know starting a podcast. And I was like, you know, why not? Like, you know, we were really trying to like emphasize or encourage, especially nowadays with everything that's going on, especially our listeners. You know, just to be more educated. There's there's so much, so many different news streams, and you know, all the information coming together is really convoluted. So we're really trying to encourage listeners, like you know what, do the research. Like you got a computer, go out there and really kind of don't be afraid to question things as they kind of come your way. Yeah, so we be like just trying to be, we are a jujitsu and MMA podcast because that's my background and that's yeah. what I do for a living. Um, but you know, we also we're not a one trick pony. So kind of like my jujitsu, like we were talking about earlier, I don't just train it for competition. This, that, other. I want it to encompass everything. So our podcast, we wanted to encompass jujitsu. The values, the morals, the funny stuff that happens, the mat chats. Like, that's how we want it to feel, like, kind of, like, after you train to bring people in and be like, oh, that's, like, it's like, you know, if you played sports, it's the locker room. Or, like, if you were on a, you know, um, you know, Girl Scouts or whatever and you used to go on your thing, we want you to, like, feel like, oh, you're just hanging out with your friends again, shooting and shit, having a beer, you know? Um but we want to not just be a one trick pony where it's all about jujitsu. We relate a lot of our experiences from jujitsu because it's all I've done martial arts since I was five years old. I'm going to be 38. So this is my 33rd year training. So it always kind of circles back around to it. But we, we there's so many other crazy stuff going on right now that really needs to be addressed. We just want people to like think for themselves and go out and not take the first thing thrown at you. And there's also that viewpoint too. It's like the end of the day, like, like we're dads too. So we're trying to balance, like, you know, he's running a business. Like me, I'm working like, you know, 70 plus hours a week trying to balance like work, training, like being a parent. Like I got one kid now, I got like another one on the way in a couple months. So it's like, Good all, luck, brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. It's tough. Hey. You got two, right, Dave? I got two. I mean, yeah, I got You're two. You're the only two. psychopath with three. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it's just that constant balance, that constant juggling act of, you know, trying to develop, you know, devote time to perfecting your art while trying to be the best parent you can be while running a successful martial arts school. Or while doing work. your passions of podcasts. Like yeah. Modern day renaissance, man. That's just, what you're shooting for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't even look at you when you make that face. I just want you to know that. Yeah, I wanted to look. I, you notice how I looked I need to take a eyes. picture of hard, that. Hard, I need to take a picture of that face. Yeah, it was. I, I know how to make him uncomfortable sometimes. <laughs> no, that didn't make me uncomfortable. I just can't no, look at you face you. like Dave's that. Dave's got no soul. I, I have no soul. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. That's what do you mean you know I don't? Who? What does that mean? I know. Yeah, how do you, you act know? like I haven't known you for like twenty years now? Has it, it's been a long time. It's been man. a but long time. I haven't time. seen you in years. Yeah, but I know. I lost connection Listen, with so many people. Stripes don't change, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how come you didn't talk to him for a while? You blackballed him? No, I didn't blackball. No, no, I didn't. Not at I just all. Di disconnected from people. Nobody. I like uh, we talked about this with George. Well, you went away for a little bit, and then you got married to Olga, yeah. who used to train at George's, and then yeah. you guys kind of did your own thing, and then I think you came back to George's. But like, I was only training day classes. For he like had his own school years. at that point. And I've had my own school since 06. So I, How many different spots do you have? Three? So originally I was in Newton in 06. And I was there from 06 to 09. And then wow. I was in... Yeah, three years in that little three spot? Three years, yeah. Because that George, cow. that was his building. Yeah. And I rented it from him. And I was there for three years. And then I was on that warehouse space on uh, 94 in Lafayette. Yeah, I remember that one. That was the first one I, I went that to. That was by G&G, yes. &G, right? G&G &G Diesel? It was across from like uh, Angry Eric's Brewing Companies over there now, or the old 84 Lumber, okay. or Motorcycle Madness. Yep. So we were there. That I was, was a there. big spot, dude. Yeah. That was the biggest spot I've been to like what, you know, when I started. Yes. That was well, big spot. It, was, it was also like, it was a warehouse, so the ceilings were huge, yeah. but we had like a second floor, and we had a bunch of mat space, and I split that with... Uh, Sir Wrestling. So I was there for two years and then they kind of needed their own room or whatever. So I was on that spot by Bagful Bagels in Lafayette for seven or eight years. And then I've been here for almost two. So, but I've, I, my goal was never to be up there. I just kind of fell up there. So I was the first school in Sussex County. 
And I opened my school in 06 as a four-stripe white belt. I didn't even have a blue belt. But I was the highest-ranking guy in Sussex County That's as crazy, a four-stripe white belt. It was insane. <laughs> like, back in the day when we started, if you were a blue belt, you were a god. Yeah. yeah. Like, you yeah, sure. blue belt, I'm like, I'm never going to get it. Because <laughs> Georgia took him, like, five, six years to get a blue belt. So, I mean, you know, he trained, whatever. But, yeah, I mean, so, like, when I started, Yanni was a blue belt, one-stripe blue belt. Um, and then I worked my way up, and then like purple belt was like unobtainable. You were no, just right. like George was that was a, a black belt. belt. That was a black belt right. to you, and like you like you couldn't even like sit next to him. Do you remember then... the first purple belt you saw other than George? No, but uh... Alberto, right? It was yeah, Alberto. Alberto. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you are right because they were and he owns Man too, right? Yep, that one. Yep, and we ended up getting I think our black belts around the same time. Me and Alberto, because I think he got, I got mine in. I'm my black belt in 2012. Yeah, 2012. What do you so, think about what's going on right now with black belts and how they keep moving the goalposts and adding the amount of stripes that until you can promote and then have guys compete in IBJJF? That's all garbage to me. Like, you should be at what you deserve. Now, like, I come from traditional martial arts, so I don't. I have two other black belts besides. Three other black belts beside my Brazilian <laughs> jiu-jitsu black belt. So I've been through the traditional aspects, and I've seen the... the McDojoing? That, and I've also seen, like, you know, the political sides of things, like who's actually got a kiss to do this, and who's that, and so on and so forth. I think once you're a black belt and you're, you know, I can see, like, a seasoned black belt, you should be able to promote. Now, like, I, I'm a second degree... I got my second degree kind of, you know, a couple years past. So next year I'm actually eligible for my third degree. Um, but for me, the only reason that I need that is just to make sure that I can move the guys up underneath me. That's the only thing. Like, I'm never going to see another color belt in my life unless I live to 70 or 80. You know, then maybe I'll get a red and whatever it is up there. Red and black See, so he's one, got the right? chart over there. That's cool. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like nice, that. Right? You could, so you, you said a seasoned black idea. belt. But how would you define a seasoned black belt if you're not doing it by degrees? Uh, See, this is where it gets all wishy-washy. Ah, uh, no, hold on one second. Guys, Garrett's got to go poop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I swear you He's going to the chart. He's no. going to poop right now. No. Sure Close the door. This is how you define the season. All right, Garrett's, uh, Garrett's got his belt here. It's no, all no, no. Riff you raffled. can't just go by that Why? because I've Who's seen that? video of people what do you do? running Chew on your belt. Over, yeah, run on your belt. I've seen people running <laughs> That's their like, belts like, like over. Back in the day with football, the kids I've that didn't people, play scuffed their ho- uh, helmets yep. on the ground. Yes, I've seen people <laughs> taking sandpaper to it. Stop it. I'm telling you right now. You this I is have, real life. I have heard stories of Google. someone that trains very close to this area that would run their belt over in their driveway. A black belt? No. Okay. What color belt? It's a, a color belt. Magenta? I don't know what color that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man. There's magenta's well, not could, a color. You could, right? also, you could also wash your belt and it weathers it too. Yeah. Yes, but now listen, I wash my belt because I'm not a dirtbag. It's sanitary. You're supposed to yeah. wash your belt. It's sanitary. Well, yeah. technically, no. When you come from the traditional martial arts, we were This is not traditional. Not right? never, we were washing because your yeah. blood, sweat, and tears That's is right. in there. We have yeah. to get the mercy and training, the ringworm. My belt off. was soaked through. I had to wash that. Yes, you have to wash it around bag. You're like, yeah, I don't wash my belt every single single day but my belt goes in the washing machine. I will yes. strongly disagree with this. I've never washed my belt or my ass. Don't bring <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring your belt or your ass to yeah. core ever again. That's fantastic. You know what's funny though? This is the most I've ever heard Ed talk. Thank you. This I've is said known, all I've, the time. I've known Ed and he's been in my school for seven or I think you came to my grand opening too. A bunch. Maybe. I've been to all he's the been seminars. here a bunch of times. He's never said more than hi to yeah. me. Ever. No. I didn't how? know you talk. When you guys had a podcast, I'm like, how are you going to have a podcast? He doesn't freaking talk. <laughs> but have you heard his interview skills? No, he's very good. Very good. Very yeah, good. Don't fluff me, But bro. now, that? <laughs> if you me. unlock see, this I door. Wanted, I want, see, I wanted it. to give him you a positive comment. Feel, look at him. That's great. <laughs> but if you unlock this door and people start walking in here, you'll watch him clam up like yeah. no other. Well, I did as soon as I said, you're good at something. <laughs> did you see him? His shoulders dropped. But that's just us right four. Here. Imagine if more people came in. He would be hiding my limit right here. That's why there's only four ports on this. That's it. No more. We can get a splitter. Ooh, no, we're uh-oh. done with splitters. We were doing that with the Zoom with the splitters. We have it's two splitters, so it's we can hook up more microphones. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice setup. Yeah, well, that's what me and Drew were talking about because Drew's the brains of my operation. There You're you in go. big trouble. Yeah. Delegate, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's over. 
Yeah, no. <laughs> He's the educated one yeah. out of us. So what's the plan? How do you guys... One of the problems we're having is judging our growth. You know, you, you kind of look at the numbers a little bit, you get a little bit of feedback, yeah. and you're kind of not listen, sure. You're always down on us. I just want to hear. Listen, I'm asking All right, them. Go ahead, ask the question. Comparing notes. Ask the question. Yeah, so how are you talking, you're talking like looking at your analytics and like looking at all the platforms. Like, yes. how, 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 much, how much do you guys put into when somebody gives you like constructive criticism? Like, Part of me is like, all right, let me try to take this into account. And the other part of me is like, this person's an idiot. They don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's hard. He I mean, says that about that. most yeah. people the, that message us. The first, the first couple that we did, um, you know, one of the main complaints, people were just like, oh, you're, like, your audio is a little bit weak. So we're like, okay, that's not. Drew doesn't talk loud enough. Yeah, that's just, what they're saying. I'm always, you know, I'm always like an octave or two below. Like, we're actually probably, compared to Garrett, I'm probably 10 octaves <laughs> below. Yeah, you got to get worked up a little more. Yeah, yeah. So it's, um, Ed, Garrett, have you ever seen him some worked of your up? pills? Well, we literally, we, we did a podcast the other day, and we were, like, rolling on the ground laughing. So, yep. like, we went off on oh, the last That's episode, what I which, was, yeah. which was nice. It was nice. So, analytics-wise, so, like... Yeah, it's hard. When you're actually getting, like, the actual feedback, like, we... First, it was audio. And then we had a couple people, like, I know a couple of my friends who were, like, like teachers and whatnot, they actually gave me, like, detailed notes. Like, you know, sometimes you kind of go off on a certain... You go on tangents sometimes. Like, you'll have, like, an agenda, and you'll be talking about one topic, and all of a sudden you just skew off and go yeah, that's off. that's what people are saying to us. Like, you guys go off topic too much. I, I'm that's like, a conversation. Ever, yeah, that, that's the thing. If you're having a conversation, before? we go off on, you know, yeah. we bring up, like, you know... Is there any podcasts, like, that are influence you directly, like, well, that I you mean, like? I, then it becomes an interview. And to yeah. me, like, and not like a free flowing interview. It's like, okay, where were you on the? It's like you're getting, being interrogated. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, we it's don't like, do it's interrogations. Like yeah, yeah no, free that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. It, so, like, we said we want it to be like a mat chat. Like, we're all interjecting. We're all throwing our two cents in. We're busting each other's chops. Yeah, you, you think know? about it too. Like, when you have that, like, that kind of post training high and you're like relaxed and you're happy, like, everyone's just, you know, having a nice conversation. And there's nothing behind it. And we were trying to really emphasize that kind of environment and give that to people. So, I kind of think. Think that every jujitsu school should have a podcast just to kind of get to know you know but get to know the people that you're about to go i think it's great but with. we've all been training jujitsu for a long time and not everybody's that freaking interesting <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, i'd be kind of curious ed and i actually talk about this yeah. did you oh man Wait, what well, you, you know what i'm do? saying because like there's listen. certain people that we wouldn't want to listen to no yeah. i could barely watch you teach a class yeah i get it Come on, they gotta practice though. Listen, this is a skill set for yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Teaching, yeah, they've had the practice. Yeah, no, man. you got public speaking practice if you've been teaching. No, no, but public you... speaking and public entertaining is different. No, because if you're I teaching a class, two two together, you can't be out there I teaching a class two two going, together. uh, uh, uh. That's all I do, baby. No, that's not all you do. That's you're actually do. getting very I'm getting good. Getting better, but I'm saying people. But can still, get you don't uh 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 through class. You pause. You wait. There's no uh. There's no like. If you're teaching class, you cannot teach class going uh. All right, calm it uh, down. Calm it down. Drew, have you been teaching classes like here or at George's? Yeah, actually, like so. Every once in a while, like George will hit me up and have me cover like some of the nogi classes. And Garrett's, you know, hit me up a couple times like, hey, can you teach like a Saturday class? So I kind of help out with both. How so. do you feel about that? You like, do you want to make that more part of your life, or just like when it comes, you take it? Yeah, it's more you know, if, if, if at the end of the day, if someone's gonna ask me for help, then yeah, I'm gonna help them. You know, I, am I trying to go off in that direction? I don't know. I mean, I can't. I kind of feel like we're in the same boat here. We got a family. We got a full time job. Yeah. And we're kind of like I'm trying to like inch towards that a little bit more. But then Dave, you know, he kind of pushes me out. Yeah. I mean, who I, pushes you out? <laughs> I love when you're at the at the school. I mean, I would listen, love we to. all need help. Yes. I mean, we all need help. I said it. I said it in Alan's episode. I cannot do it on my own. Yeah. I love when people are there. Like I have four brown belts that come through regularly. Yeah. And I like Ed to teach. I like Kyle to teach. I want Dan to teach. Yeah. I never seen Dan teach. What's his problem? I don't really yeah. like what he shows. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just perfect. kidding. <laughs> hey, guys, have you ever had that? Like, you you know, you let one of the guys teach or something, and then they're just kind of showing what you don't want. Or are you trying to tell, kind of dictate what they're going to show? Um, well, this is. I try to make sure that everybody becomes their own man. So I don't try to, or a woman. So I don't try to control them. I just try to guide them with how to get better at relating their point to a bigger to the masses. So not everybody's a great public speaker. Sergio didn't talk. Like I trained him for two years, did privates with him, and all he would say, "Thanks, coach. Thanks, coach." Does he Thanks teach now? He's taught for me for years. Serge hasn't been in. He has an injury, but yeah, Serge. Then he became a good instructor. Yeah. Um, I've had a I've had a lot of guys that I've trained over the years that became good instructors. Like Some guys have opened their own schools. Sure. Some guys have, you know, went and worked at school down the road for me. So <laughs> I've been through it all. Good, bad, ugly. Well, going back to Sergio, I feel like he 
jump the big level. And I think you think the instruction kind of helped him through that. I tell everybody because George that you trained with tonight, he's been teaching for me too. And I think if you can teach jujitsu, you understand jujitsu on a deeper level because you can you can reiterate it and explain it to people. So then you really dissect that move, so it does make you a better better competitor or a better jujitsu yeah, player. Yeah, kind of retain the information. Better. Let's let's yeah. face it too, though he is a specimen. That guy. Yeah, Are you smart. kidding me? How old is he? 20, so is 24 or 25 24. now? 24. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, he's a baby. He's the same age yeah. as Gordon. So now yeah. when you have somebody covering a class, unless mm -hmm. it's on a regular routine, like you said that you had Drew cover some classes for you, are you doing a curriculum yes. so he knows ahead of time yes. that it's half guard week? But, so, I yeah. but I say, exactly, but I say, you show you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, want you right. to do your moves, but we're working on side control. Yeah. So I don't care if you show a pass. I don't care if you show a submission. I don't care if you show a bit. I'll say, this is what I've been working on. If you want to, because I teach like chain wrestling. I go from the takedown to the pass to the pin to whatever it is to the submission. So how it kind of unfolds from the feet to the ground, that's how I teach the sequence of moves. So this way it just gets you like, oh, I go from here to here to here. That's always been my 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 teaching style and thought process. Because like, you know, I see guys that teach and they'll be like, oh, we're doing arm locks today. Then we're doing deep half guard tomorrow. Then we're upside down butterfly guard. Then we're doing, you know, the hibbity dibbity. Whatever it is. Like for me, I try to stick with a curriculum for the month. So they grind it, they gear it, they get it, and then we move on. Only issue I would say I have with that is like you don't come back around to the same moves as often, but it's your job as a practitioner to drill. For sure. Yeah. Like, I think that's know? I think that's the best way though. I trained for years with like no end goal. You would just come in and learn a move or two, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't know how did I get to this position? Yep. And then what do I do after this move? Yep. Yeah. When I really started going to Yanni's again, that's when everything started chaining together because that's how Yanni shows. If it's side mount week, yes. Yanni shows a pass to get to side mount. Yes. Then the attack from side mount. Mm -hmm. Everywhere else that I've trained, you start in side mount. It's like great. I'm in side mount. How did I get here? Yeah, yeah. no. Well, that's, yeah. I uh, think that style, like, like, can I get it on Yanni style? It also helps you better understand the technique conceptually. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's not just a move. So now you've taken one move and you've made it, you know, 30 moves. Because now you understand why that move works and it allows you to kind of blow it apart and kind of hit it from, so, like, many different angles. Right, because as you're passing, you might wind up in a different position rather than just starting in side mount in it's a fake position. That, well, yeah. that's that what position I was saying. Like, I've been training happen. with Yanni since I started jujitsu. Yeah. Like, you know, I used to just do privates. And if George, and if George wasn't there, I was doing privates with Yanni. That's who I started jiu-jitsu with. So Yanni was my mentor on jiu-jitsu and how to teach jiu-jitsu. But I've also had other good mentors from kickboxing and karate and weapons and the other stuff that I did where, like, I've, 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 taught, I've taught martial arts since I was nine years old. So I've been teaching and I've been honing my craft since I was, you know, a young age. But... Jiu-Jitsu was a different animal, and I started that at, like, 21-ish, 22-ish. Um, and then, you know, like, Yanni was one of the big, so that's why I've always taught. And then, you know, I always went, you know, George has a certain way of teaching. And then when I was going to the city, I would always take Professor Donaher's class. So I've been in and out of that room with him and seeing his teaching style for, you know, 15 years. So, that's the best of the best, so you're learning from the best. Of yeah, but, like, he's, uh, Gene Dunn, we did a podcast with you know gene dunn and you know he had a you know great theory he's like you know john is a, a savant but it's not always the best for the beginners that's true so i can say he teaches yeah. and all that so that's why i said like he's a he he knows it and all it but like you know depending on how he teaches and he has his group of guys that he focuses on well so. he always says he teaches to the highest guy in the room yeah so if you're the lowest guy hey sol so if you're the lowest level person, oh in yeah, the room, you're lost. You're in the lost, sauce, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because well, you've been in, you've been in Hendo's, right? The only one time. Oh yeah. Oh well, I mean, in that class, in the the twelve o'clock class, John's class, like you know, it's really mostly blue belts and above. But I mean, dude, it's 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 a killer. You're you're walking in fighting for your life. It is, um, which is good and bad. So you get good level, you get good training. Um, but you know, if you train there, when I was training there, like two days a week for a couple years, um, you know, then you start to know the guys a little bit more, and then you can get more productive roles instead of just fighting for your life. Because we've all been in that where like you come into a new school, you're not used to training with a guy. Even if it's like your your anxiety level goes up a little bit, you're getting gas quicker than you thought. You're yep. you're playing a weird position that you usually don't play and then it's like but now we roll together five six seven times you're like oh we can play now we can learn so that's like i think that's one of the things you always got to kind of get past with that too sure so let's talk about that for a second now so 
when do you think you had a bigger target on your back when you would train somewhere else, as a brown belt or as a black belt? I've always had a target on my back. You don't think People that just anyone has targeted a <laughs> specific belt rank more than another? Well, white belts, blue belt, or target blue belts. But blue I'm, belts. I'm, I always think you target the belt above you yeah. the most. Now, as a black belt, everybody tries to kill you because they think that you're going to kill them so quickly. Where I'll have a 250 pound, you know, D1 wrestler coming at me like, um, you know, and it's just like, I'm just trying to survive, yeah. you know, like he knows how to wrestle. He's got a black belt in wrestling, so he can control you. He can move you and he's heavier than me. Um, So, I mean, black belt, I've, I don't know. I've been a black belt for almost 10 years now. So I've had a target on my back for pretty much half of All my right, so training talking life. About, yeah, talking about uh, black belts. Promoting a black belt. What do you think the criteria is? You think it's different than the blue, purple, it brown? It depends on the individual. Okay, so you tailor it based on the individual. Uh, yeah, well, school. listen, you can't be no punk. <laughs> you that's gotta true. be able to do be your no thing. Punk. You know, but that's you the, can't be a idiot. I didn't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, but you know you what I'm saying. So like, buttons. you have to be able to survive against anybody, not be anybody. In my opinion, I think you need to. <clears throat> Excuse me. The majority of the people that you're training with, if you're going for that goal, you should be able to put away. You should be able to submit. You should be able to do stuff. Um, but you should be able to survive pretty much any level of attacks. But a 60 year old getting promoted to black belt is way different than my 21 sure. year old competitor. What yeah. about uh, teaching? Like, how much teaching should they be able to? I do? I think every black belt should teach. I think it's just I'm from old school martial arts where you know some people shouldn't teach. <laughs> so that means some people shouldn't get a black belt. <sighs> Not. It's a slippery slope. So, I mean, for me, I think becoming – it depends what you're getting in martial arts for. So if you're in jiu-jitsu and you just want to be a world beater and that's all you're about, I got a, I got a spot and I got a spot for you. But for me, I feel like you need to be a martial artist. So a martial artist, there's certain things. Like you see on my wall over there, a code of echoes, seek perfection of character, be faithful, all that other stuff. Yeah, Dave, where's your quotes for your so, world? Come on, bro. You gotta step it up. No, no quotes. Yeah, <laughs> no. But th those are things that I have my kids start with because I always said to my guys, even when I was training fighters, all different levels, I was like, I want you guys to be the toughest son of a bitches in the room, but you can still help the old lady across the street, and you could yeah. still be a respectable human being. Well, yeah, I think when we were talking, uh, we had that conversation with Gene, and he yeah. talked about this. Gene, open your eyes. Yeah, this big explosion. Uh, with the competition scene, like everything, not just IBJJF, but like fight to wins and everything. And you have these guys going out there, you know, who are, who are world leaders essentially. But now as you're getting closer and you're, the po com competition scene is becoming more popular, you're starting people to, you're seeing these people kind of stray away from like the, the real, what it really means to be like a martial artist. They're not in class, like I said earlier, like trying to be like, like Gene. Gene's a real big inspiration for me. He's from traditional background, but he was the enforcer when you went into hands -on. He's six foot five, 240 pounds. He's a U.S say karate heavyweight champion he's a judo black belt he's a you know a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt that just trained with henzo and john exclusively he started when john Donner started like you know he told the story on our podcast where they threw each other through the front window and were rolling out onto the street and everything <laughs> they're big dudes so and he was the enforcer and he was a fighter and everything else fought at highest levels and he's just like you know he likes to paint and sculpt and write and do that stuff he he's trying to bring it back he he goes there's a point in your life where you realize that that's not what it's about. Yeah. It's about helping others and not always being the biggest bad. Don't get me wrong. We still want to be able to bust somebody in the mouth and take care of ourselves. But it doesn't become about that anymore. And I've kind of reached that now, especially. Like, You're I getting got, old, I man. I got soft. Yeah. I got kids, bro. I got soft. <laughs> How so, much did that change life? Oh Holy my cow. god! We talk about it all the time. Like well, yeah. I'm a different human. Yeah, I think right when I was halfway through like purple belt, like you and I had a conversation one day after training because I was just competing like all the time, and I was like, you know, I just want to go out there and just win and whatnot. And then it became a point. I think it probably started around the time like my daughter was born. I was like, you know what, man? Like I'm getting older, and I just. I just love training. Well, I asked him. I yeah. said to him, I go, what do you want to do? I'm like, what's your end game? I'm like, because like, he was trying to compete, and he's like, I'm competing. And I'm like, but do you want to compete? Like, do you want to be like ADCC champ? Like, just tell me, and I'll gear it to whatever you want, yeah. and I'll treat you however it needs to be treated to that. And then, like he said, one day he just came up to me, and what did he say to me? I was like, dude, I just like, it's like, like I said, like, I just like training. I just like being healthy, like, you know, going in there. Now, if I compete every now and then, that's cool, but I'm not looking to be the next Gordon Ryan, man. I'm just looking to stay healthy at this point. And, you know, if I can do this when I'm 70, like, great. You know, if not. I just like choking people. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You never choke nobody. I choke all the white belts. <laughs> all the white belts. <laughs>
any white belt can get so it. Your, so what's your game now? Because like when we used to train together all the time, it was half guard, bottom half guard. That's what you used to play. No, I don't play half guard. Butterfly guard. Butter, I don't play butterfly guard. guard unless Ed forces me there. Oh, He's the only so one in the whole school that forces me there. What do you play? I don't know. I don't have a set He's, path. I play Delaheva. <laughs> I'm terrible. Well, I play lapel guard. I do all. I do a, a oh, bit of you're everything. A lapel guard guy. I do a bit of everything. You know what? We've been messing around with lapel the worm guard. guard. Yeah, the yeah, worm guard. Yeah. Surge is it's big effective. on that. Yeah, yeah he's getting he into was, it. He was, and then he, I sent him before all this went down. I sent him down to uh, Hensel Gracie Orlando because he was going to do the Pan Ams, um, and then he was trying to get ready for something else. But I sent him down there, and at Hensel Gracie Orlando, that's Pat Cooligan School, and he used to own Hensel Gracie Ottawa, yeah, yeah. or I, I don't know, he still might, I don't know. But like he moved, he he immigrated to the United States from Canada, um, and down there, like he. His thing is like he's been to every world since he started jujitsu. Like he loves the world scene. He loves. He just wants world beaters. So even if he has nobody in his school, he has all these Brazilians and Argentinians coming that are world champion blue belts, purple belts, and they live in his school. So I sent Serge. Serge went down there for like two weeks, and they literally like just have like cartons of eggs in the corner. Thing they're used to living, and that's like, but that's like high class for them because they're used to living like right, you know. Sure, yeah. So and they're going to live their dream, and they just go and compete at every like New York Open, Florida Open, and they just get in a van and they drive all over the country and compete. So Serge got there, and he was like the first day he calls me, he's like, I suck at jujitsu, <laughs> and like you know he's beating the guy who took silver in the ADCC, you know. So like. He was just like, oh, I suck. But I'm like, dude, you're getting your bearings. You're at a new school. They're playing different games, you know. And then, like, every day he's like, oh, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. And then, like, a weekend he's like, all right, I'm starting to win a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, you just had to figure out the game, bro. That's but it. But it's just like, you know, he was big on the Keenan, like, that worm guard and stuff like that. So the good thing is, is I hate that. I hate that guard, okay? But training with somebody who's bigger and stronger and good at it, he also shows me sometimes how to get out of things. So now I can have good defenses. To I feel yeah. like it's going to start to, over the next five years, it'll Everything start evolves. to it'll start to enter the room more, and yeah. then you're going to have to deal with it. Because you don't have to deal with it if it's not in the room. Just I deal with it all the time. Yeah, so that's plays good. with it. Uh, Frank, that yep. we train with, Fireman Frank, he's like 240 pounds. He looks <laughs> like the Puerto Rican Hulk. I feel like there should be a and weight his, limit. He's a fireman, and his grips... Yeah. Are like like he'll tear your gi in half. He's he ripped my gi, like my lapel. He stretched my gi <laughs> down to my ankle. That's I couldn't break his. You can't break his grip. Yeah, you cannot break his grip. I, don't, I, I challenge both of you. Well, he can't, no, he can't break any grip. I can't well, break he's any grip. No, I am so fine. weak. Yeah, I can't we, break any grip. I have to learn to do whatever I'm going to do while somebody's holding a holding a grip. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I understand. All right, going back to the mentorship role. How do you feel about people that take breaks, like Ed, like me? What kind of breaks? He you just know, takes a couple breaks. months off. A couple hog and dogs. Why? I, li I like ice cream and I like watching TV. But you, you can know? do that and train. No, uh, not Ed. See, I don't know. Like, that's I've learned over the years too that I'm built different than other people. I haven't. Taken no, no a you break. are. But how do you deal with people in your? You know, your you're students. teaching your students. What do you do about your students that do, take breaks? Do you, think do you that call role, them up? Do you send them poop emojis? Yeah, do you think it's your role to motivate <laughs> yeah, them, look, or I like just it. if they show up, then you can? I do both. Both. Perfect. So I know some people sometimes need a little bit of a break, but a break to me is a week off. No, no, it'll take a month or two. Yeah, no, 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 that's unacceptable. Yeah, but Unacceptable. then he comes back, plays the same game. He's still as strong, and then he lock you down, and well, you can't like do anything. Well, that's like Piotr. Remember Piotr? Oh he yeah, would oh, leave, Piotr, for, yeah, yeah. leave for months at a time and yeah. come back and sub all of us. Yeah, I'm like, what is this? I've been training my ass. He was like, my goalpost. Dude, when I subbed him, oh, I was I like, all right, I got it now. Dude, it's yeah. hard. It's hard though. Like still to this day, that bowl and bowl. He's still head. training over there. Uh, I I've trained with him probably two or three times, but like same thing. He'll just pop up on like a random yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah, it was like all of a sudden he's like, hey, I'm here again. Hey, <laughs> yeah. hey, how are you, my friends? But he is the one of the sweetest human beings. Yeah, and he, he was my main training partner coming up, getting him ready for fights. He was one of my first professional fighters. Um, he's 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 like a, he's got a close how place in he my now? heart. He's older than me. He's like forty. Yeah. I think he's forty two, forty three. Wow, he's that old now? Yeah. Another old guy. Dude, this is got, what I like. I want old guys to his train. His daughter's with. like 20, 16, 17, and then he's got- to start a master's class somewhere yeah. just for old farts. I'm just, I yeah, it's called picture. day class by George's. <laughs> <laughs> I got a job. I, I can't quit. come to that. You sneak out. You're close, a, right? You still like, like a UPS? Yeah. 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 Piotr, like years ago, when I first moved back, when George had the old location, they were doing like those in-house like tournaments. And I think like something happened last minute, but they were trying to set up like a like a like a Muay Thai fight between me and uh, a smoker. Yeah, it was like a smoker, like you know, like three two minute rounds, like one of those. Oh, between you and Peter? Yeah, he like... would have beat the black off you, bro. <laughs> yeah, he had the best head. <laughs> he had the best head movement I've ever seen yeah. out of anyone, right? For a white guy too. Yeah, I know. No, yeah, but it that, is. Yeah, but Eastern European. 
I is. mean, come on, that's different. Lomachenko. That's it. it's just <laughs> Lomachenko. Lomachenko. Just, just a different breed. He ain't no joke. Different breed. Oh, stop it. You look at him. 34 years old. Black Atlantics is doing him just fine. Yeah. Just fine. Look at that. Plenty of, plenty of Shake Shack and, uh, you know, five That's guys. That's what pisses me off even more. What is Shake Shack? I don't even know what that is. Okay. What? All right. Introduce them let's to Shake talk, Shack. Let's talk about this. Right. Wait, where is Please, it? Please, come on. Tell us. So Shake Shack is just one of those other, like, burger chains. Just like five guys? burger chain. Yeah, so just like just like five guys. You they eat ju- that crap oh, yeah. and look like that? Yes. yes. Not fair. But not it's every not, not, not every all day. the time. No. no. He's very disciplined during the week, but yeah. then he goes off the rails. During the like weekends. during the week, like Monday through like Friday, diet's pretty clean. And then like Saturday I'll come I'll come here and I'll train. And I'm usually on like a you know, I'll like I won't eat for like, you know, like sixteen hours. And then I'll go to Shake Shack and I'll get like two double cheeseburgers, fries, like probably like a twenty piece nugget. And a milkshake. And How just, many people are you feeding? Oh, just me. <laughs> oh that's my it. God. And do you I'll know put, what I would weigh I, if I, I would, did that? I put all that down. But you, you got to figure that's like once a week. And that's like, you know. I don't care how often that is. So, oh, it's so good, though. Uh, dude. Listen, during this, whole, during this whole this whole, I talk about this all the time. It's not fair. Don't get me wrong. As soon as I get home, like, I'm on the can. Like, immediately. <laughs> yeah. Immediately. Good. Right. Serves you right. Yeah. 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 Serves you right. All that dairy, like, just, yeah. So, Garrett, what's your plan for the future? How do you see jujitsu? From the next ten years, I, how, that how means much he's getting ready to close I'm it out. But it's only out. an hour. Can right, we keep talking? Easy, bro. That's I want right. to keep talking. I missed. Go Gary. ahead. You can talk. Just like he can answer it, and then we'll go on. No, I'm not this is it. your shutting down mode now. He's in oh, shutting no. down mode. I'm testing the waters. I want to see what he's going to say. Well, I just told going. you we're not shutting right, down. So, okay, so then what are we doing? What, do you, what, what was your question? Where do the I see jiu-jitsu? The future of jiu-jitsu. So 10 years ago, yes. it was way different than it is today. Oh, God, what yeah. Did you, you ever gonna... think we'd be here? No, never, ever, ever, ever. I, I didn't think I was going gonna... to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> I actually probably would have thought the same thing as you. I, for you, man. not for me. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm a crazy man. We all know this. But that's what makes me fun too <laughs> so makes me a good time predict the end of covid and then 2030 what does it look like 2030 because that's when covid's ending Go that's ahead. when it's over oh is that <laughs> when it's over okay well i think I, in my personal opinion i think covid's gonna end after the election and then i think something's gonna come up in 10 more years another pandemic yep i think they're gonna something's gonna happen but jujitsu wise like this is one thing that jujitsu players are a different breed like I said to Drew in the beginning of this, I was more scared of a staph infection than I am of COVID-19 because staph infection has almost killed me. And the staph infection survival rate is way lower than the COVID survival rate. So if you do the numbers and you get into the hospital, you get a 10 to 30% of people that get a staph infection and have to be hospitalized die. Okay? So for me, I was like... I'm more scared of staph infection, so let's roll. And as you can see through all this stuff, we all still wrestling, still because we, we do. It's what we love, and I'd rather die doing something I love than hiding in the corner and hoping that the boogeyman don't get. I me. agree with that. So, <laughs> yeah. so you listen know? to this. All right, my son, he's ten now. Mm-hmm. He told me because no training during this whole time yep. that he would rather do jujitsu and get COVID than not do jujitsu. That's a man right there. Oh, he's a little man. man. I said, that's... all right, that's a great thought. Keep that to yourself. Yeah. I don't want to hear See, that. See, I train. You didn't train with him. No, we uh, he just we did a l- very little bit, but I so followed I doing, the rules I was and doing, I didn't train this whole time. I was time. doing Zoom classes though for my students the whole time. Yeah, so, I was as well. So yeah, so but me and Gav when I taught the kids class, me and Gav would train. So Gav was training with me two, three days a week where like me and him would do like pretty much and my other son Gunner would like as long as he wasn't like blah, 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 dancing around the room. Um, you know, Gav like we basically trained three times a week so like when he came back and the kids got back he's like blast doubling kids because he was used to wrestling me right so we did some of that we did some of that but he would always turn it into a game where it's like all right i'm just gonna grab your foot and tickle you and now i want to go home yeah see like my we don't do that stuff like my kids know when it's in here we're business he's a little no we have fun he's laughing i'm throwing him around but like they know like i i try to make it playful but there's it's still constructive and like i'll take a little i'll bite it but i'm rough with my kids so like i bite them i rough them up you know like and but like it's playfully getting them, you know, more conditioned to the grind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen, my kid fell on the skateboard today. They didn't, they didn't on have fun. The, in the parking lot on the pavement. Yeah. I ran over, neon bellied him. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you all right? Which no, one which one hurts more? Ah. Which one hurts more? The pavement or the neon belly? Get off me, Dad. Oh, life, you okay now? And that's how that we solved that problem. Nice. So you have bo- you have boys or I girls? I got two girls. Oh, he's a girl or pretty two. Sure, I'm pretty got, sure number two is gonna be a girl. There you how go. old's yeah. your girl? Uh my Girl now is 18 months. 18 months? Yeah. All right. Yeah. How old are your kids? Good luck. My kids yeah. are six, four, <laughs> and two. Is the two-year-old potty trained yet? Trying like hell. Is the four-year-old potty oh, trained yet? Come on, yeah. bro. All right, good. Four? 
Six. I'm having problem. I'm having problems with potty training. He's got to bring it up every episode. Every episode. I want Ed it's to feel tough. bad. How old? She's gonna be four uh, next month. But right, I told so. you what to See, do. Like, he boys doesn't are listen. Different. You just let them pee on everything, and they think it's the coolest thing ever. Mm-hmm. I was just like, "Yo, you guys can pee on anything outside," and they were yeah. like, "Really?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yes, you can." I've heard this yeah. before. That, and like this. literally, like they would just walk outside. But it was bad. Like the first time they went to the beach, they walked right up, middle of the shore, walked right up to the ocean. Hands out of their <laughs> Both of them, hands on their hips. I was pretty proud of that. Proud, moment. Yeah. You gotta be but proud. But like, my my wife and uh, her mother are like, no, 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 and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're just pe- and God bless those little men. That stream, I am jealous. <laughs> I have, they can piss over their own heads. You might have a <laughs> prostate problem. Ed'll check it out for you after this is over. Right. <laughs> One finger or two. All right, take it easy. Okay, PG, yeah. bro. Oh, well, he started it. Right, well, he, so he you're the one it. bringing fingers Both into you it. Stop. No. Yeah. I mean, we'll talk, I was, yeah, he was going to rub your shoulders. Prostate health uh, first, though. Yeah. All well, right. Good to going back to the kids, though. Ten years from now, all the kids are going to be monsters. You yeah. think we're going to beat them or but what? This, no. 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 Not at all. Thank you. I'm going to oh lay all over them. Yeah. No. I talked to, I I talked to a friend. I'm not about laying all over kids right now. No, they're going to be adults. Well, there's too much going on. Were you at Epstein Island, too? Take it easy with that, too. You guys are going dangerous. Yes. We might get to I talked to I talked to a friend, my friend Dan, about this all the time because he just thinks that it doesn't matter that they've been doing it since they were three years old. We're going to have so much more knowledge. No. Eh, wrong uh, answer. Wrong. No. Because this is no. built into these kids. This They're going to smoke and this us. This is what yeah. I said when we were training MMA, and then I started having kids at 13 training kickboxing, or 12 cra- training kickboxing and jiu-jitsu, and now they're all like 20. And it's like you can even see the evolution of MMA where like it used to be like striker versus wrestler, this, that. Now everybody can fight everywhere. Yes. Nobody's a slouch anywhere. They can all box. And that was the evolution. So now these kids are already starting at that level where like, dude, we used to, it would be hard to find. We were lucky we had somebody who taught jujitsu in English. Yes. Yeah. So the the way you can relay information and all the videos and all the stuff that's going on, it just, the information gets relayed so much more clearer and fast now. That they're light years ahead of us, but that's how it should be. Every generation should get smarter and better. Yeah, right. They're not but stopping my over under pass. It's just not going to happen. They're going to stop it. It's not going to happen. You're going to be able to that, you unless got... you stay as fat as you are, and they are much lighter than you. That's the only that's way exactly you're going to be able to happen. Jimmy's got Jimmy. We train with too. He's got a. I taught Jimmy first. everything he knows. Yeah, <laughs> Jimmy's got a good over under pass too. <laughs> I can stop Jimmy's. I can't stop Ed's. No, no, I stop. Right there, baby. No. Jimmy's a bowling <laughs> ball in arms, bro. <laughs> I know. Listen, yeah. I, this has actually been helping me. Come on, since we started this, you know, we had the COVID thing. But now that we're back, I was here four times. I'm going to train with him. Actually, tomorrow. this is the most I've ever so seen him train. If I can keep this since pace I've up, known him, maybe I'll lose some weight, start competing again. No, you keep like talking about losing weight. You're running at the Yo, Fire did you Academy. Two, did you two have your match yet? Not yet. No. Wait, wait, listen. When everything's officially yeah, officially open. open. Right. No, no, no. No, it's going to have to be catch. It's, it's going to be open oh, weight, uh, man. absolute That's it. because absolute. Okay. I'm never going to be that heavy, and he's never going to be this light. And I'm only in the 90s. He's fat as can be. Were 210, bro. 210. Yeah. 210? four today. <laughs> All muscle, wow. though. How, so, how fat are you right now? Wait, 210? I don't He's believe him. Last time he said he was 210, he got on the scale. He was 215. I have my clothes on. I'm honestly going to say you're probably about 220. No. Yep. Yeah, you I don't know tell. anything. I do. <laughs> you got a scale here? Go bust it out. He's fat. <laughs> The springs are going to pop out you the side. Is it the only Hold, scale on, a second. Hold on a second. Hey, you guys want to. I'm not going to fat shame. You're going to tell me the only reason I'm good is because I'm big. That's the only reason he says. That's no, not I what I say. Baby. That is not what it's I say. the same thing with Jimmy. Jimmy's big, but he's got the technique. No, nah, Jimmy does have good I technique. I did not say. I've never said that is the only reason you're good. So That's how can you reason. win, though? Is it sub only? No time limit? No, no time so, limit. So I can win on points. No, but I can win Sub on points. No I haven't in. subbed uh, yeah. him since 2007. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But I can win on points. Joe? I last my, night. Yeah, last night. <laughs> what did I get you with? Armbar. You That's called right. yourself Yanni afterwards. I am Yanni. <laughs> <laughs> like the guy that plays a fool. No, or because like Johnny. You, you, know, you know all the uh, belly down stuff he's doing? Mm-hmm. That stuff, I yeah. love that. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's yeah, he killed me. <laughs> it's easy. You just got to bring your knees over. That's not that easy, bro. His belly's in the oh, way. All right. <laughs> well, if you get a good clamp, you can keep him low and That's just it. roll. So now you got his back tonight, you said. Oh, no, just no, about. No, no, right. so ended, bro. No, no points. Was watching that clock. You would have got this. So I can I come. Got this, <laughs> so can I come here and train with you so you can prep me for Ed? Oh, absolutely. Perfect. 100%. Training camp. Training camp. You think tomorrow. you could get him to beat me? What's that? You think you could train him to beat me? Yeah. I've well, already long, beat you on points. How long would you? Wait, need? is this a gi match or no gi? Gi. Okay. Gentlemen rolling the gi. That's true. Savages roll no gi. There you go. That's right. I'll accept it. I'll accept it. Come on, I try to get you guys to disagree on anything. It's just not gonna happen. No. 
We can't. It's crazy. We can. The opposites we attract, can. you know. We'll, we'll we find. do. That's why, I, like, I have black, white. Wife. That's it. That's yeah. the only thing yeah. you guys have. Opposite. You guys always got to make it about race, bro, don't you? Gertz, 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 say it again. Say it again. You guys always got to make it about race. No, no. What? What did he say? Yin and Yang. It's yin and about Yang. Stop saying yeah. Yin and Yang. yang. Gertz is essentially my photo negative. That's what. It, that's all he is. <laughs> photo negative. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I have a feeling he's a few inches shorter though. Huh. Yeah. Everywhere. Don't say that either. Don't worry. Ed's gonna cut that out. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to cut it out. Drew likes that one. Yeah, I'm, that, was, that was a good one. That was actually oh a good God. one. <laughs> Yo, listen, I just, it comes out. I've been very good. I've kept my mouth up. Have control. you guys thought about in the future doing video kind of content too? We have been doing video now, yeah, so I'm that's Skype why we have our YouTube. Have. Okay. I haven't checked How's YouTube, YouTube working out for you? Are people watching? Yes. Not, it's not like we're like 6,000 views per episode, no. but What's it was. better still? Um, it's weird. So it depends on the demographic of the interview. So the people that are a little bit younger that we interview actually hit up the YouTube more. The older generation that we're YouTubing are hitting the Spotify and stuff like that. Right. Um, but it's weird because like we were getting like, you know, let's just take a round number, like say 50 listens per episode or something like that. Okay. But then all of a sudden we saw a drop, but we started our YouTube video. So it's actually some people like it might say like, oh, 15 listens. And you're like, oh, only 15 people listen to it. But then I go look and they have 40 views on there. So it's really right, right, right. we're at 55, 60, 70 still between both platforms. Yeah. Um, but you want to get the subscribers, et cetera. So, I mean, it's just like like everything else. It's going to take time. We didn't get into this thinking it was going to be like an overnight thing. He we did, did it because he did. Thought. He's waiting for it to yeah. just turn over. We're about yeah. to beat Joe Rogan. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure, sure Spotify is not going to call me tomorrow with a hundred with a hundred million dollars. Listen, yeah, I don't yeah. watch your YouTube. I listen to Spotify. It's easy. I put Which it on is at fine, work. Yeah, you boom. drive and you're at work and everything. But That's like it. the younger kids, like so. This is why I did. The YouTube. Do you think they're sitting and niece, watching? It doesn't matter. My niece said she uses YouTube for everything. Like so, even when she's in her car, she's YouTube listening really? through it. Yeah. That's why I was like, we have to do YouTube because we talked about it and we were going to set up the camera and then we had a Skype interview and I'm like, yo, even if we don't have video, like we just download our episodes That's with the, like do. how you guys yeah. do it too. So like we try to do interviews with the, um, you know, with, with, with our guest or whatever. Um, I mean, Skype or Zoom makes it pretty easy because it saves both files, um, just audio. You know, depending on how you hook it up. Um, but I mean, that's cool. But uh, I've also gotten feedback that people like seeing us because I'm animated. You know, they can see Drew's face. They can see the other person react. And it's like it's like they feel like they're sitting in the room with us. So there's pros and cons to both. Yeah, but we're just trying to hit, you know, when you look at like other feelers, podcasts, I like, guess, like Joe Rogan for the longest time, like even though he, he's on like Spotify and some, he was on some other platforms for a while, like majority of his people were consuming his content through YouTube. YouTube. You know, even if they weren't watching it, they'd have YouTube open and they'd have it playing right. and they'd have like the screen minimized. Yeah. So that's one thing that we're arguing about now. I'd like to say arguing because we're not agreeing on it, but yep. one of the things we're going through is trying to figure out more YouTube content. We have a couple of things that we want to do in the future. We just haven't done it yet. So like but, YouTube content, like you guys doing your match and putting it up there. That's yeah. one of them. Like one of them. We are gonna start the Tap Ed series where all of our the people that we interview, have to they have to roll Ed. with Ed and they have to tap Ed. If he gets one point, he wins. If How you long? tap Ed, six minutes. Five minutes. Five, uh, oh, <laughs> he wants those that masters for the rounds. He wants I have that internal rounds. clock of hold you off for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I so get so it. if Ed gets one point, he wins. If the person we're interviewing submits Ed, they win. So did so anybody so take you up on that so far? Well, we because of COVID, it. we haven't done it yet. Dominica seemed real excited about it, but she was in her boot and we were She had a broken leg. She'd probably still tap Ed. Oh, for sure. Yeah. She's good. Yeah. She's really good. <laughs> yeah. She might be. I've all never right. trained with her, but I've seen her, you know, and yeah, she's she's a uh, it's crazy, especially when you get to the high level women, like some of them, like they can just do stuff that guys can't do. Certain things, like yeah. positional wise and stuff like that. And like you go to roll with them and you're like, How the where the how'd you get yeah. over there? Like, you know, it's one of those yeah, things. Yeah, Dave hates women. He thinks they shouldn't be in jujitsu. <laughs> I love how he puts words in my mouth here. <laughs> well, that but, was always the thing. Like my one old instructor used to say, like in karate, they're like the worst day was 1980 when they started letting women in the dojo. <laughs> and I was just like, whoa, bro. That's Dave's stance. Yeah, yeah. I, well, hey. We have a pretty good demographic of women in the school. Thank you very much, no, you're, Ed. You're a charlatan. You're a you're a trickster. You I tricked him in there. You just want to know the look. This <laughs> That's out. a good word. Fancy. That was a uh, fancy. He word. sometimes breaks out big words because I have a limited vocabulary. That's true. Drew, what's that mean? Give me a breakdown on that word. No, vocabulary. Tell you, man. no? stop Char it. Charlatan. It's like I'll look it up. I'll Google yeah, it later. No. Charlatan. It's like um, should I Urban Dictionary it? 
No, no, no. Real that's dictionary. No, that's an okay. OG. No, that's, that's a real, a real Webster's, Webster's dictionary. dictionary yeah, term. Just, Webster. checking, just checking. Well, but, they got some weird stuff in Webster's now, too, that even qualifies as bo- vocabulary, I think. Don't go down this road. I don't know. No, I know. <laughs> so have you I trained, know. <laughs> have you trained with any high-level women? Um, In the city. I've yeah. trained with... um. <clears throat> Excuse me, Henzo's first woman black belt, Kay. You remember Kay? No. Okay, she used to help with Claudio's fights, doing the nurse stuff, all that stuff. But I've trained on and off with her for years. There's uh, one of the brown belts, uh, Biz, or they call her Bridget Busy or something is her Instagram, but this girl, Bridget Grace, she teaches at Gregor's and in the city she runs the girls' class. She used to come down to George, so I've trained with her a bunch of times. She's a real good brown belt. She took, I think, second or third in the world. Something else. So I've trained with some higher level women, and yeah, I think she just got her black belt a couple months ago too. Yeah, you can't separate them from the men. I mean, I'm getting smoked by these women that I'm training with. They're so good, it's crazy. Oh, I I agree 100. percent You know, like that's that's why I love jujitsu too. It's a great equalizer, man. Big, small. Like, listen, I'll take being strong and fast and knowing my jujitsu any day than being small. But like, it is an equalizer because you got those guys like the. What's his face with the glasses? Out of Kyo Terra's Mikey. Mike Mikey Messi. Messi. Not yeah. out of Kyo Terra. Well, he not was. Anymore. Now, not anymore. Is he starting his own academy, or what's he doing now? I'm not sure if it's even been announced yet. Oh. I don't know. I have my speculation. What is your speculation? I think that he's going to be competing under uh, Studio 76. Okay. Really? That's what I'm guessing. Who's yeah. 76 or 54? 76. Um, Roberto, the Jimenez. Oh, is that their new... Uh, oh, the besties. Yeah, because oh, they they train together and they you know, they're both in Vegas and well, he's gonna he need trains something. Out of Luca, IBJJF. Lucas Leperes, right out of Vegas, don't they train out of there too? No, they left. Not the lines. anymore. Okay. Left oh the yeah, they too. did. Yeah. Hey, whatever, man. More power to them. They're both talented guys. Yeah. You know, I mean, listen, Kyle Terra. I mean, it's tough though. You know, just from an instructor says you like you bring that guy to the the level and all that other stuff, and then he, you know, that's always hurts your heart a little bit. Um, but you know, people got to grow. Listen, I'm a creanch myself. What's that? I'm a creanch myself. It's not a creanch. It's, I mean, it's a traitor. People, it depends. I mean, everybody Just has their reasons. embrace it. Don't fight it. What's that? Embrace. No. Embrace. It's literally, it's a, there's, there's certain things that people have their reasonings for. And, you know, because I've been on both sides. Um, and I've had it happen to me multiple times this way and that way. But I've also had guys come back to me 10 years later and apologize and say, you know, I was foolish and, you know, I didn't appreciate it and what you were doing to me. And now that I'm older, I can see it. Um, and then other people just think I'm an ass. So it is what it is. I'm not everybody's <laughs> cup of tea. And I don't care. So you either love me or you hate me. There's really no in between with me. I'm in you know? between. Yeah, stop it! You love me. I'm the opposite of you. I need to be loved. You said you don't you, like. Yeah, positive. no, no. That's why You're, I'm uh, a contradiction. You are. I need it, but when you give it to me, I don't. Oh, like you don't it. like it. But okay. then I need more. Say more, but, and then oh, yeah. stop, stop. Okay, stop. then stop, stop, stop. <laughs> I got mental disability. You're like a woman. Here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> you can't say stuff like that. I he just I want. did. I just did. And don't cut that part yeah, out. Yeah, we have to yeah. put that on a loop. Well, you were talking about martial arts before, like the arts part of it, the creativity. That's what another beautiful thing about women bringing in. It's a completely different. It is. They, 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 spoke, they, they approach it from a uh, different mindset. And that's why I always say all the time, like, martial arts, it's an art. So it's whether it's, like, painting or sculpting. Like, you're just doing it physically with your body. So it's, like, expression dance or, like, something else. You know, it, you, you could still apply that art philosophy to martial arts and make it your yeah, own. Yeah, like, if you roll with G- Drew and you don't know it's him, you just blindfold and you start rolling, you're going to know. Yeah. It's him. Yeah. Absolutely. Because everybody's got that own. That's why it's great to come here and roll with your guys because they don't roll. Everybody's got their little bit of different, and that's beautiful. Yep. And then even like they roll similar to me, but they all have their own paths. Yeah. Right. So you, you know? can tell that I'm a Yanni student, but I don't play his exact thing. I focus mm-hmm. on the things that, you know, really stood out yeah. to me. Everyone's the one got or two moves that I know. And style, like, you know, it's one of the best things about it. Well, it's good. To, I mean, it's good to train with other people and oh, yeah. get other ideas. I always just say, like, with my guys, like, I, my guys were always. I'm, I don't want to say aloud because that sounds like an ass, but like it's like I've always had my guys. I'm like, go learn. Like, if they're cool, they're learn. But I always say, like, this is your home. You protect your home. You you bring the knowledge back to your home, and you you know you don't have to give away the secrets of your home of all these things or whatever. But go get the information. I think it's bring a balance. It it's a balance. It's you a gotta balance. have a certain that's, amount. That's yeah. Life though, life is all about balance. Hence yin and yang. See. 
Say, I it. say it again. <laughs> say it again. I hate it. I hate all three of you. I think I think one of my favorite things about when I I think right when I was on like blue belt, especially when you travel too, because jujitsu now it's it's blown up. It's really everywhere. So if you're on vacation, you're on a business trip, and like you manage to have like a gi or something in your suitcase, and you find something close, there usually is. It doesn't matter where you where you are, you can drop in. You know, and most most schools. I mean, I think I've only been like not allowed to like train at like one school, but most schools is like hey, why like, what? Why was that? Uh, it was a school. I won't say where, but I, I just kinda, say it. It's probably in the put south. Put him on blast. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was the south. It's like I'm a, I'm a Henzo student. Yeah, that's not why we're yeah. not letting. Yeah, it's like, oh not really? Why. Are you sure? Yeah. Can, we, can we just say it was, yeah. it was a Henzo school? It was in school? Alabama. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, But I know some schools are like iffy. If like you're, if it's like a Gracie Baja and you're like a Henzo guy, or vice versa, they're kind of like yeah. weird about that. It's like, come on, man. Which is like, weird because like you could like be a Henzo Gracie guy or a Gracie Baja guy and never like know. Carl's, Carlos Gracie Jr. Yeah. or Henzo. I just think never, you're you fighting know. against yourself, like in the the whole grand scheme of things. We're trying to grow it, and that's really, yeah. you know, but not helping. I think there's pros and cons to you know you're you're in you know under. I've always just been North Jersey MMA, so I'm a Henzo black belt under George. I'm a George Cernak Henzo Gracie black belt, um, but I've I've always just been North Jersey MMA. That's I just do my own thing. So like it's like yeah like that's my instructor that's where I've had my loyalty to to train but I've trained at other places it's just you know like I've always done my own thing like I fly my own banner and I'll and I'll rep and we compete under like Sergio competes under Henzo to get them points and whatever and mm -hmm. stuff like that but you know I mean like and and they've given me my jujitsu so I respect that. But I've always been North Jersey MMA. That's just me. Like I don't have to tag like uh, you know Hanzo or Alliance or whatever to my school. Like I have faith in my abilities. I have faith in my guys. And I'm not trying to go like be IG, I, BJJF. Like I you should at least love. know the letters. Yeah, right? no, you but should. I'm just saying. Like I, it doesn't. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is like it doesn't matter to me that much. Like I don't care. Like I said, like as I'm older too, like I don't need the world beaters. I just want to make people around me better humans, be able to defend themselves. Just giggle, baby. That's all I want to do it, is giggle. That's it, man. Yeah. Like, I'm, it, my, my mindset has changed in martial arts. Like, when I first started this, it was like, I just want fighters, fighters. Last thing I want is a fighter right now. They're like a, George said it the best. They're like a racehorse, okay? You have to feed them the best food. You have to take care of them the most. They take the most of time away from everything. They cost you the most money, and they can break their freaking leg while going out of the gate. I want the Clydesdale. The workhorses, they're in here, they love it, they're always gonna be there, they're always gonna be helping you, and you can make them stronger and faster and everything else. I need Clydesdales, I don't want racehorses. <laughs> you know, that's how I look what at it. What do you it. want? I don't want horses at all, they sound yeah. like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm only alliance for IBJJF, because I wanted to compete Nothing myself. And somehow I wound up with a bunch of people that want to compete. I love it though. Which is awesome. Yeah, I like Yo, the competition. All my guys, if they want to no compete, I'm first fighters. one there in the corner. No, no fighters, fighters though. <laughs> we no don't fighters. do striking. Yeah. There's no striking coming in. It's jujitsu. I'm weak. I'm a wimp. Nobody's slapping me in the face. I just want to choke and get choked. And that's it. See, I kinda want to get slapped. I think that's called a, what is a sadist? <laughs> Hmm? What is that called? A sadist? Like yeah. choking? Yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, listen, man. You know, some people have to go and like pay for it at places, but you know. Yeah, it's it happens. Here. I, well, I pay a hefty bill for rent. <laughs> yeah. Does that That's count? Yeah. yeah, that is. So. That's it. Well, I mean, I I'm originally a striker, so disgusting. It's called awesome. So I still like to spar. So I still spar. I still keep my you know my my uh, my skills. My my knife sharp. You know, and I try to do that because I'm I've always wanted to be a well-rounded martial artist. Uh, you know, I fell in love with jujitsu. I love jujitsu. I probably train jujitsu primarily now, but I because you can't spar every day like you can roll every day. But I still try to get my bag or pad work or moving or excuse me, my, my sparring rounds in at least once a week. I would like to start doing some pad work. Uh, there is a guy that I've been talking to. I want to start doing it just. I feel like I would like to be more rounded, but I have no you interest have Nick up in you for sparring. A little bit? Yeah, Nick's well, a good dude, or Cameron. Cameron's a good guy. They just came in. They just like used yeah, use the gym. Yep. But that's who I want to start working with and just do some striking, just for more personal knowledge. Yeah. I never do want the to work spar out too. Just ever. like getting used to yeah, that. Yeah. Maybe I won't be so fat anymore. No, it's just it. It's different Ed, muscles. You should strike. 
Listen, no, but it's different you know muscles. What? Your when body I, gets listen, used to rolling. When yeah. I started, the reason I started because Ultimate Fighter, I wanted to beat Chuck Liddell. Yeah. I got kicked in the leg once. I'm like, I'm out. Yep. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> I it's hate hard, Drew started, he only did Muay Thai. Yeah, that was Muay Thai and, uh, and TKD. And, but yeah, like, and this was G- Sosa on your G- uh, on your team. Like, I remember sparring with him back in the day. Who's that? Sosa. Oh, God. So Sosa's what, he like 6'5"? No, he like, ain't that big. How big is he? I don't know. Everybody's bigger than me. So. But honestly, <laughs> taking leg kicks from him. Oh, uh, no. He's a he's a The strong. way his leg, it literally looks like someone's cracking a whip. And like, he'll take both your legs out from under you, no matter what no matter what angle he throws a kick from. And I remember back when we, we kind of came up together. Him, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's brutal. But, I mean. Just put some pajamas on me and let me lay on you. That's all <laughs> I, I want to do. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Wait, so. he's true. That's true, too, because he doesn't want to do any nogi. No, no, no. That's no? not true. I'm, I well, want... You're basically no gi with your chest hair hanging out all over Isn't everybody. Isn't that annoying? Yeah. Right? I get done rolling. I'm like pulling his chest hair ever, ever, <laughs> ever. No, I used to you're train gonna with have no to. rash guards. Yeah. COVID ever. times, rash guards. But then I went. I can't. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah, no. I got, I got, I got scolded a couple you. times. That's why I started wearing a rash guard. I just yeah. can't do it. I don't like it. You're going to have to learn. I'm not learning. But I'm going to get into no gi. I got to get back in shape. I just, I feel like no gi, you need to, yeah, it's a little too yeah, fast. It's fast. Listen, it you, did you hear what, what he just said? That's what makes you get the hustle sauce up, man. Did you hear what he just said? I got to get back in shape. Ed, when did we meet again? 2014? He's been saying that since I met him. Well, I could change. I've seen you go flux over the years. I flux. Yeah, you flux. Wait a second. I flux too, what though. Year? So. What's that? What year was he thin? My point exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I want this to be stop being brought up. Uh, did I say Fine, stop? Stop it. Too many times. Who cares? Stop. Jolly Yo, stop wearing rash guards. Hmm? Stop wearing rash guards. That's it. Just let the taco meat fly, man. Taco yeah. meat yeah. fly. Uh, I don't know. Let's do it. I'll probably I'll probably keep wearing a rash guard. Come you on, have, you man. You have tons of rash guards. I know. I have so many. Roll Junkie's roll our sponsor. You open like three Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. Roll Junkie should be carrying mean jitsu. I always liked mean jitsu. <sighs> Do not kill Mean Jitsu. Okay, so I still own Mean Jitsu, and I keep it around. And actually, at one point, uh, Roll Junkie owns Mean Jitsu website as well. And before, literally right before COVID hit, me and, do you know Matt, Ed's brother? Yeah. Me and Matt were in the works of starting to design at least a new Mean Jitsu shirt to put on the Roll Junkie site. So it's still in the works. I wanted to bring it back. All this stuff hit, and we're working on it. I always liked Mean Jitsu. Everybody does. And they're like, well, why it did was it go? It was, it was awesome, and it fit. You know? So we're, we'll we'll keep you guys on the lookout for that, though, definitely, and we'll we'll let you guys know. Because it, it, it's funny you said that because I've had multiple people say, why don't you bring it back? And the same day somebody told me to bring it back, my other buddy called me, and he was like, I just bought Mean Jitsu website because it came up again, so you have it. That's awesome. And I was just like, I guess it's meant to be. I reached out to Roll Junkie, and I was like, yo. (laughs) Mean Jitsu. It It was good stuff, man. It was like the perfect saying. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was good stuff. We we we're we're working on it, but you know the podcast came in, and you know that's been going you know pretty well for us. Yeah. And you know we're working on it. It's just a grind. The biggest thing we always say is consistency. That's it. You know. Go ahead, say something. Consistency. I'm man. the one telling you that. <laughs> you the, the one who wants to quit. Those clips? I'm the one that wants to quit. Oh my god! Do you guys listen? Do you guys listen to the podcast? Yes. Yeah. He wants to quit every week. Why? Because he thinks we're not doing good. We don't have anyone lined up. It's like, dude, you got to relax. Sometimes people have lives, and we'll have to do an episode without a guest yes. because you gotta that's do it, man. what you got to do. Yes. But he we wants do. to quit once we a week. Dude, once honestly, a week, he wants to quit. Our thing, try our thing was we do it twice a week, and we do one Wednesday night. Yeah. Me and him, and then we try to get one interview dude, a week. A couple five-minute rounds, and then immediately grab the mics you right just after. grab the mics and hang out. That's we it. sit right here over on it's the, the Not good enough for Ed. He wants to quit. <laughs> Look at I got, you. I got high hopes, all right? Stop hey, it can be me. entertaining, so just the two of us. So what? You you, you, you want to quit after 20 jiu-jitsu classes? Yes. You That's did? why he takes so nah, many breaks. You got to look at it like that, <laughs> see? Ah. I haven't quit yet, all right? But exactly. I do, I have high expectations. I why is mine turned it's all the way down? It's the headphones, dum-dum. Right, okay. <sighs> he puts in no work. I put in all the work, so he hasn't, doesn't oh, appreciate me. It. We've already gone over this. You can listen to the Gary you already episode. Said to stop talking this about is the it. agreement that we came up with. <laughs> All right, it's not my fault. You're not even talking now. <laughs> no, no. Ooh, I like that. Just that one, is, one, right? one idiot, one, to one touch, one and that's touch. It. You're out. Yep, life over. See ya. Boom. I'll just pull his mic cord. <laughs> All right. Well, I really enjoyed talking to you guys, and no, we, we got to keep time. collaborating. This good, in this, Drew, did you have fun? I had fun. Garrett, you had fun. I so you both fun. agree. 
Yep. Oh, there we have it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, wait, no, no, this is terrible. This Thank was the worst thing worse. ever. No, now you're agreeing again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, birds of a feather fly together. That's right. That's it. I don't yep. know what that means. I'm a penguin. All right, that's it. That. This is To The Death Podcast and True Live Fools. There you go. We'll see you next time. There you have it. I, I do love that every time sing. now. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. That was fun reconnecting with Garrett and meeting Drew. I think I've met Drew in the past before, though. I was really getting Drew. Try, I'm trying, Drew. I was trying to get you in it, give you the questions, trying to get them to disagree. They didn't want to because no, they, they love each disagree. other. Yeah, like, they love each other different than we love each other. That was a disgusting married couple. Agree on everything. You just don't like it because we don't agree on everything. I don't want to agree with you. They don't have you. to do You're what we do. You're wrong too much. Why would I want to agree with you? You're kidding me, right? No, I'm we, not kidding. They agree with me on basically everything except for rash They cards. did not agree with you on basically everything. Yes, heel hooks. No. No. Well, go back and listen. All right, fine, fine. The slap jujitsu, they, they weren't about that. Yeah, thank God. I'm no going to get slap into it. I'm going to start slapping. But they did like Brian's points, which was nice. I love Brian's points. Yeah, they were... he was very smart with that. I'm sure he's been thinking about it for a long time. He loves slapping. Yeah, no, I'm not talking about the <laughs> slapping. I'm talking about the <laughs> Oh, so you only points. pick and choose what he agrees with you, but whenever the other ones, you just forget about it. Exactly. That's what I do. This is why you're the worst. Fine. I'm the worst. I don't care. You're the idiot. <laughs> you can't even hear it. I, I don't need to hear it. I know it's there. Bam, bam, bam. We got to make more sound effects. Where's the snore? I don't want that one. You, that's, that's okay. Yours. We didn't have to snore today because you didn't bring up your dad. My number you didn't two bring fan. Up every time. Mr. John Galante. <laughs> and big shout out to my number one fan, Ed's mom. A shout out, a real shout out to our sponsor, Core BJJ. They've really been helping out lately. Core BJJ NJ <laughs> dot com. How's that for a read? Loser. That, perfect. <laughs> Soon to come, possibly mean jitsu. Possibly. I'm pushing Garrett. He's looking right at me. <laughs> He's trying to bully him. All right, and then thanks to Rob for the music, as always. That's it? You're closing out already? No, no, and I'll thank myself, Ed. I bought all this equipment. Thank you, Ed, thank you. for the sponsor. I'll thank myself. Good job. That Where was great Where can people investment. follow us? You could do that, Everybody too. can follow our sponsors at Sweaty Eddie on Instagram, <laughs> or you could friend him, Edward Wilson, on Facebook. But there's really not a point to doing that because he's boring. How about the other ones? Email. To the death podcast at gmail.com. What should they email us? What do they say to us? Mostly they say for you to stop talking. No. Do I'm you talking, even read the emails? I'm saying, what do you want them to say? Stuff. Stuff. Tell us something. I don't know. They're creative people. They'll come up with something, I'm sure. Matt, Matt, Matt. I don't uh, know what Matt, Matt, Matt means. What do we got coming up? Uh, That's on the it. You just want to do the email. You don't want to talk about social media at all. Go to our YouTube page, subscribe to our YouTube, follow us on all social media at To the Death Podcast. Now go ahead. What do we have next week? Anything lined up? Stuff. Come we on. got a couple things lined Some up. Some teasers. What do you want to tease? We might be talking to a couple of black belts. <laughs> All right. Before you say anything else stupid, let's close this out. You have I anything? didn't say anything stupid the whole episode because okay. I knew it wasn't going to be edited. Beautiful. Okay, go ahead. That's it. That was my stupid remark for the day. I do have something that I'd like to talk to you about off air, though. I think you're going to really like my idea. Okay. So until next week, this is To The Death Podcast. Episode 15. (laughs) 